December. Um, I understand that it is a birthday for Councillor Kelleher MP. So I will wish you a happy birthday. I heard that mentioned earlier. Um, Thank you. And hopefully we can get through uh, what looks like it could be a, an extensive um, agenda in time that you and the rest of us can get out and enjoy some bit of the afternoon. But uh, to business first, I will call this regular meeting of Council of the Municipality of Jasper to order for Tuesday, December 15th, 2020. Councillors, you have today's proposed agenda. Are there any additions, deletions, or other changes to be made to the agenda? Seeing nothing. Um, oh, I, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, Councillor Journal. I'm just reviewing the agenda. We have an in-camera session on it or not? I mean, I've, I've talked about it. I forgot. To Yes, um, it is. It is noted under on uh, eight point five. So yeah, that's that's all we need for now. I think so. It, it it's formatted slightly different than uh, it normally would be uh, in the agenda, but it is specifically referenced that there will be an in camera, and so it fits Thank well you. into the agenda at that time. Um, there will be some decision probably following that in-camera meeting so it's appropriate to leave it there and then come back to to business so we can report publicly on what happened uh, in the in-camera session so, thank you but thank you for pointing it out I think it's appropriate uh, before I, I call for a motion to approve I'll just see if there is anybody on uh, administration side that wants to add or subtract anything to or from the agenda Mr. Greathead. Uh, good morning, Mayor and Council. Um, if we're unable to get the budget through today, I would like to add 8.6. It's a staffing request for bylaw. Um, and I will be forwarding that information um, along to Council right away. All right, so that, that would be a tentative addition in the event that um, we fall short on agenda item 8.1. That's correct, sir. Okay. Thank you. Any other changes required to be made to the agenda? All right, with that, uh, I wonder if I might ask any counselor to make a motion to amend the agenda by adding, um, the potential for discussion under 8.6. Councillor McGrath, thank you. All in favor? That is carried. There are none opposed. And might I have then a motion to approve the agenda as amended? Councillor Keller Garanti, thank you. All in favor? There are none opposed, that is carried. We have two sets of minutes uh, appended to today's agenda. Uh, are there any errors, omissions, or corrections required to be made to the minutes of the regular meeting of December 1st, 2020? Seeing none, might I have a motion please to Approve those minutes as presented. Councillor Journeau, thank you. All in favor? There are none opposed, that is carried. And with respect to the minutes of the special meeting of December 8th, 2020, are there any errors, omissions, or corrections required to be made to those minutes? I see none. May I have a motion, please, to approve those minutes as presented? Councillor Juneau, again, thank you. All in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. That takes us to agenda item four, 4.1, a presentation from the Jasper Park Chamber of Commerce concerning 
the budget um, not included in the agenda, but sent separately. I believe there is a, a letter from uh, the Chamber of Commerce and Mrs. Pavlov, um, I welcome you. And if I can find you, um, we shall hear from you. Um, so Mrs. Pavlov's not presenting. It's going to be Mr. Melnick on the line here. At the agenda's line. Oh, okay, too. thank yeah. you. That is the younger of the two Mr. Melnicks, is it? Yes. Well, yes, welcome then, uh, Mr. Melnick. Um, and I turn it to you. Thank you, Mayor Allen, And thank you, Council, for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the Jasper Park Chamber of Commerce. Um, further to our initial submission for a meeting to discuss taxation, requisition, utility rates, and budget 2021, and subsequent meeting and clarification regarding all of three issues, the Jasper Park Chamber of Commerce suggests the following be strongly considered as Municipal Council undertakes to approve a budget for 2021. On Tuesday, December 15th, 2020, JPCC strongly urges Council to pass an interim budget with the understanding that mill rates and utility rates can be set in the new year with the clear lens into the potential financial havoc 2019 will cause throughout 2021. 2020 was for most businesses catastrophic with many surviving based solely on the government assistance provided. While 2021 business outlook is better, it is still a far cry from our regular business volumes. The government aid will likely still be needed in many instances to ensure their continued viability. The proposed budget will be extremely damaging to the business community in some cases may cause bankruptcy. While we, the business community, attempt to dig ourselves out, it is counterintuitive to make the, that hole bigger and the side steeper through increased taxation. The conscious decision by the municipality to exacerbate the current economic hardship in a time when a utility and tax decrease would be far more fitting and gravely concerning to our membership. We understand that Jasper's infrastructure needs more support. However, 2021 is not the year. The Jasper Park Chamber of Commerce, on behalf of its membership and partners, requests that the municipality reevaluate its approach for the budget of 2021. Thank you. Um, if there's any questions I can answer, or anyone? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Melnick. I, I will um, turn it over to uh, to councillors um, if they do have any questions for follow up um, on my own behalf. Um, I will say that while we welcome uh, input from, from all sources, um, and we had, as you indicated, um, set aside uh, time for a presentation or at least a discussion with the representatives of the Chamber of Commerce Friday of last week, um, which was an extension to our earlier request that budget submissions be um, into us by November 29th. But we understand that there are extenuating circumstances. Um, uh, I will say that we have done our best to explain that a budget alone does not set any mill rate. It sets a, a budget amount. The mill rates will be established um, in the spring with the tax rate bylaw, by which time, as you indicate, um, other information may be available to us, which will potentially dramatically affect the actual tax levy, um, but it is not part directly of the budget um, process or setting the budget. And secondly, with respect to utility rates, you've indicated that you would like to see those deferred. Um, we need to have something in place um, for January to be able to continue to collect utility rates. And although the rates might be adjusted, um, I'm, I'm simply suggesting that there is an obligation on council to have a rate for 2021 early in the year. And finally, I would just make an observation. And again, you are welcome to make your presentation as you see fit. But, um, and I can't say that I speak on behalf of council because I've had no opportunity to discuss this with council. But I find it um, particularly regrettable that you have chosen to depict council as making a conscious decision to exacerbate what we recognize as a disastrous situation for the economy of 
of our local community. Um, we have taken steps uh, to soften the blow. Um, in fact, businesses were allowed to move into public spaces to give them a chance to have a better business summer. And uh, I, I personally find it um, quite um, unnerving to have been told that we are consciously trying to make matters worse for the community. I think there is ample evidence that that is not the case. However, it is your submission and uh, we will take it. Uh, I will turn that over to, uh, to councillors now uh, for questions. Councillor Butler. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, <clears throat> you saved me my preamble, so I appreciate that. Um, Mr. Melnick, I do have a question relating to the um, your letter and thank you very much. I, I do appreciate the input and um, believe me when I say that I think I and all councillors are, 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 it's hard to find, it's hard to overstate, acutely aware of the um, concern that is out there with regard to our economic hopes in the community. But I, I will ask you if the Chamber of Commerce is aware of the decision with, that was made last spring with regard to the 2020 budget and um, the adjustment that was made last spring on um, the tax envelope compared to what was uh, expected prior to the onset of COVID. Is the Chamber aware of um, that decision and that tax reduction? The 12% tax reduction? Mm -hmm. Yes. I will point out that one thing council has found difficult uh, through this entire year is an absolute absence of input from the business community with respect to that decision. And um, this council received many, many letters, um, which frankly excoriated council for that decision because of the ensuing uh, reductions in services in the community. And so it is difficult to find ourselves now in the position of being um, criticized in this manner, where when we did take um, a very conscious decision in favor of the economic uh, condition of our uh, commercial taxpayers, that we heard nothing. So that's a little difficult. And then my second question will be, in your third paragraph, where you reference the conscious decision by the municipality, what decision, what actual decision is it that you're referencing? I think that the conscious decision or maybe potential um, is businesses are concerned about the utility rates that are being proposed and what that could mean for um, the businesses moving forward with regards to the rates that are going to be expected when a normal business level would not be seen this summer. So, okay, so thank you. So your focus there is, you would say, on the utilities aspect in particular. I, would I realize you're referencing both utilities and the taxes, but um, where you've mentioned that decision, you're thinking primarily of the utilities? Correct. Okay. So I'll just wrap by pointing out, just for clarity of record, um, that no decision has been made, um, that the budget as it currently is uh, proposed is a proposal from administration for consideration by council. Um, and for sure, the um, utilities bylaw is a proposal by administration, having gone through a couple of rounds of conversation with council. But these are proposals and decisions will yet have yet to be made. And I am making that point for anyone listening in to recognize that uh, we haven't made decisions yet and won't until we've uh, finished hearing input from everyone. So thank you very much. And thank you for allowing me to respond on a couple of items. Sure. Uh, thank you, Councillor Butler. Um, 
I'm not sure whether others experience the same thing. My, my screen froze for about 10 seconds there and I missed some of your comments. Uh, I see Councillor Demota has his hand up. Um, if that is just for, for another question, but did anybody else uh, experience a, a gap in, in your comments? No? The blip, on, the blip on my side was minor and I didn't lose anything that Councillor okay. Butler was saying. All right, fine. Thank you. I, I will carry on then. Uh, thank you, Councillor Butler and Councillor Demota. Uh, thanks for uh, presenting uh, today, uh, Mr. Melnick. It's, it's, uh, it's an interesting day to see uh, both you and uh, Senior on the on the screen today. So, and now I've got you side by side. So there's a you know you can really see the resemblance. So you can uh, have a good idea of where you're headed. Anyway, uh, fun aside, uh, yeah, I, these are difficult times, and and I really appreciate uh, the chamber coming forward. And unfortunately, unfortunately, it is in the eleventh hour uh, for us. Uh, but, you know, that doesn't say that everything has to be written in stone and, and we have to do everything today or uh, have a decision made. Uh, I think there's a great opportunity to work with our stakeholders in the community, uh, particularly the ones that, you know, contribute the most to our, our requisition. So um, I wish that we would have had the opportunity or made a, an effort collectively to, to meet on this earlier. And, and maybe that could be something to work on. Uh, in the future. So uh, I appreciate the information uh, that came forward and uh, your concern. And I just, I do want to let you know that uh, as uh, the other councillors have said, um, you know, we are fully aware and, and we're not tone deaf to the situation. Uh, we understand where 75% of our tax requisition comes from in that regard. And then also uh, a heavy co contributor to uh, the utilities uh, consumption in, in the community. So uh, we're, this is weighed heavily and, uh, we're definitely taking everything into consideration. So, um, even though we're a little bit late at the table together, that doesn't mean that we can't extend the time on this. So I, I think there's a great opportunity for us to collaborate. Uh, and I want to say more a little bit later, but I, I'd like to hear from, uh, the, the hotel association before I, I comment any further. I just wanted to, to give my thanks. Thank you, Councillor Demota. Questions from other councillors for Mr. Melnick on behalf of the Jasper Park Chamber of Commerce? I see, I see no hands. So again, then thank you, um, Mr. Melnick, Justin Melnick, um, for that presentation. Um, and thank you for uh, your group taking the time to meet with uh, three councillors and administration um, last week where we had an opportunity to uh, try and clarify some of the issues before us. I will turn us then to agenda item eight, or pardon me, 4.2, um, a presentation from Mr. Melnick Sr., if I may say that, on behalf of the Jasper Hotel Association. Mr. Melnick, welcome back to a, a session with council. It brings back fond memories and um, recognize um, the decisions that go on the table are not always easy. And especially in these current times, which I think um, have not happened before makes it even more difficult. But with that, good morning, Mayor, Councillor, Municipal staff. Thank you all. This is a great opportunity for us to present additional information on behalf of the Jasper Hotel Association as it relates to the current 2021 budget deliberations and the pending decisions that will arise from this meeting. We appreciate this opportunity, recognizing we are late to the gate. Um, and we did identify some topics in our December 10th meeting that we wish to address at this meeting. And I'll try to be succinct in each of those topics. Um, under the proposed current tax increase in budget, uh, it has been stated, and I just for the record, will state that during 2020 hotels in Jasper have seen significant revenue declines due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, closed international borders, reductions in seating capacity and food and beverage facilities. And anecdotally, um, while I can't disclose individual figures 
um, some businesses have lost up to 50% of top line revenues. And that's just a reality. Government aid wage subsidies have allowed properties to continue to employ staff. So we could provide for them and their families. And of course that supports all of the community as we keep people working. And without this aid in the future, significant losses will occur in each and every business, not just the hotels. 2021 will not be like 2019, not only in revenues, um, but in also economic activity. And while I recognize that you need a base to go back to, um, going back to a year which is not going to reflect necessarily the future, um, given that we don't know travel patterns, um, it, would, it is actually very difficult to, to be able to put together a budget that reflects a year that is, doesn't relate to this year. And in consideration of the next 12 months, the JHA requests that council delay all proposed tax increases to the residents and business and pass an interim budget only so that additional reductions can be considered and implemented. We also ask council to delay for a year additional increases to the infrastructure reserve account and reserve funds. And while we recognize the need to continue to build these reserves in the future, in this current economic uncertainty, further draining of funds from businesses is counterproductive to their ability to survive this next period as we hopefully get to where re real recovery might occur in 2022. The next point in our letter indicated the taxation mill rate and tax split between residents and businesses. And I recognize this is not a topic for the current council meeting, but I thought it important to start the conversation about the current tax rate split between businesses and residents. The split has not been reviewed in 10 years. And since that time, a number of residents has, a number, a number of additional residents have been built and the proportion of residents to businesses in our current tax split is as weighs differently now. So what I'd suggest is once the financial statements of the current year are closed, unused funds and surpluses from the 2020 budget are added back into the 2021 budget and the funds left available for 2021 from the most funding, which I understand is a provincial government grant are applied to 2021, a final budget can be considered and approved for the new year. At this time and prior to the setting of the mill rate, the current tax split needs to be discussed and a more equitable solution implemented. And I reflect, I appreciate the mayor's comments that this is not the time for that discussion. Regarding utility rate increases and changes, the current increases to the utility rates and potential changes in the collection of funds to recapitalize infrastructure, and I say potential changes, of this facility will place significant new costs to businesses. And given the uncertainty already discussed in 2021, I mean, we're seeing daily reductions in business levels for December, which typically are the law, are, are stronger two weeks going into the following year. Um, we're ending this year on a really low note. We also request that the JHA and other stakeholders, oh, pardon me, we, we request that given the uncertainty that we are asking for the change to the utility rates be delayed for one year. We also request the JHA and other stakeholders have an opportunity to receive further information and provide input on a longer term solution um, and as noted, you know, late to the table, but we have an opportunity to make an assist in decisions for the longer term that affect all of the stakeholders. I believe that would help in the decision-making. So on behalf of the JHA, thank you for the opportunity to present it today. I request council to take the time to reevaluate the current approach to the 2021 budget. Um, it's a daunting task ahead of you and I'll try to answer any questions that anyone may have. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Melnick.
and I will invite questions from counselors. Councillor Demota. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Melnick. I appreciate uh, the uh, Hotel Association coming forward again, as much as I do the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, one thing that I do want to say is that, uh, you know, there was an effort made by Council last year or for the 2020 budget, recognizing the situation that we've, uh, that we're in and having a little bit of foresight uh, from information coming forward from various sectors on, on how things were going to look. We didn't think they were going to be as this, this bad and, you know, and this is where we are. And uh, I think yesterday in some conversations, um, I felt that we were accused of maybe pulling the trigger a little too early on that reduction. Uh, but then when I went out and talked to some shareholders, they said, well, we don't know exactly yet because uh, we haven't got our financial or year ends yet. So, uh, you know, this, this may have a positive impact on it, although, you know, uh, it's going to be harder to get out of when we have two back to back years in the, in the manner that we have. So fully understandable. We're, we're not tone deaf to that. And uh, so I just, I just wanted to say that um, the concern is there. We're aware of it. We were aware of it a while ago and we do share your concern. I think also we do have a great opportunity to work together um, collaboratively on, on greater efforts. Now that everybody's paying attention to each other, I think that uh, we might be setting ourselves up for a perfect storm down the road in the same manner that Whistler did when uh, they had the opportunity to work with their stakeholders uh, to get resort municipality status. And, you know, they had a bigger target. Their, their perfect storm was the uh, 2010 Winter Olympics. But I think that um, the realization of, you know, our broken model uh, that it's not working and um, we've got um, agencies or uh, stakeholders at higher levels understanding the crux that we're in at a greater level I think is important so uh, moving forward we have to understand as a community that you know um, the, the larger contributors to our uh, tax requisition are in need of help and we need them to be successful for us to have a sustainable future and if we're not working together on this it's all gonna be broken. So uh, we have to, I think, going forward, work more collaboratively together and work on some engagement processes so that we can have a better future collectively and work through these types of scenarios together so that we're not ending up 11th hour situations at, at each other's tables. So um, I think we've, we've, we can learn a lot from this and we can grow a lot from this. Thank you, Councillor Demota. Other questions or comments from councillors? Councillor Butler, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you very much, Mr. Melnick. And uh, I, I appreciate the um, points and clarity of your suggestions. I appreciate uh, the tone and manner um, that you are making specific suggestions for us to consider and respond to. So I have a couple of questions. The first is with respect to your first bullet point in, in your letter. And I, I guess it's the same question that I asked uh, Mr. Melnick earlier. And that is, are the JHA members um, fully aware of the adjustment that was made to the 2020 budget relative to the 2019 budget? so that the understanding of that um, tax decrease is on the table when looking at the current year's budget. I would say individually as ratepayers, they are aware. As an association, did we consciously sit down and say, this is what has been done? We did not, but, okay. but of course, when you're writing the check, you see that it is a change from the previous year. So thank you. And um, I, I guess I wanna use this opportunity to make a point with respect to the tax envelope that is currently on the table and proposed. And again, this is really um, just an effort to make the point publicly so it is there for context in the discussion. But I think it is important for the community to be aware that if council does accept the current proposed budget, with an $8.4 million 
tax requisition as is proposed, and that is still, of course, an if, that would represent over two years a tax decrease of just under 4% per year relative to 2019. So I would make the point, for example, that the city of Edmonton um, just, I believe, made the decision to pass a 0% tax increase. If we go through with the proposal in front of us, over 2020 and 2021, that would represent a next net tax decrease of about 4%. And the final point I wanna make on that, and forgive me for using this opportunity, but I'm, I'm not sure where else to put it. Um, there is relatively little discretion within the tax envelope of where council can reduce the tax requisition without significant impact on the community. And uh, while I'm not against going with a lower tax increase, I think the community needs to be aware that if we do, uh, there will be the necessity of reductions in services to the community. And I, I hope the community is aware and the hotel association is aware of that as well. But that being said, I do respect the view and accept the view that the tax increase seems high this year. Second question, or I should actually ask if you have any, if you wanted to respond on that at all. Then I wanted to ask um, your second point that taxation mill oh, rate of- I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I missed my mute button. Oh, sorry. Um, just for clarity on the 4% reduction over two years from 2019, is that strictly taxes or is that taxes and utilities combined? I'm referring to, yeah, to the tax requisition, the municipal tax requisition. Okay, so just again, yeah. utilities are not included. No, not in what I'm talking about. I was talking about the tax requisition because I was referencing your po first point, which talks about tax increase. Yeah. So then I, I just have a question about your second point where you've referenced the mill rate and mill rate split. And you're quite right. That is a conversation that can ensue in the new year. But where you're saying it's acceptable and you pointed out that it hasn't been addressed for 10 years and you're quite right on that. I'm just wondering if, if your organization feels that it's unacceptable in the context of the current year um, of the COVID situation or because you referenced that it hasn't been looked at for 10 years, do you find, your organization find that that tax rate is unpalatable over the long term? So is that a, a, a this year COVID related point that you're making or is it a broader point? And I'm just kind of interested in your perspective on that. No, oh, and thank you for that. Um, we went from a 7.1 to 1 to the 5 to 1, 5.1, or 7 to 5.1 to 1 a number of years ago. Um, and that was a reflection of, of, I think, changes from the municipality being initially set up. Um, and since that time, um, as I mentioned, you know, there's been additional uh, infrastructure added for residents. There's been additional um, housing added, some of it cooperative, some of it has been redevelopment of infill. Um, there's been multi-unit structures put on, I believe, R3 lots, and there still is proposals for further residential high-density development within the municipality. And I think we just need to recognize that, that as that tax base grows, that component needs to continue to pay an equitable share of the overall cost of running the municipality. And so I would agree, yes, in the longer term, we need to continually be looking at what that split is, considering that the business community could random, rapidly change over the next year based on what the next two years brings. I, I mean, will a business community be as many businesses? So it's an ever moving target that I think that particular split bears at least um, uh, being looked at at least a couple of uh, once every couple of years for sure. Great, that clarifies for me what you're thinking is behind that point. And I have to say, I agree that um, uh, sort of a year over year, year after year assumption that the tax rate split, which is in fact part of the tax rate bylaw passed every year in uh, April or May 
the assumption that that just should remain as is on an ongoing basis without consideration is, is probably not best for the community. So I do appreciate you taking this opportunity to bring that forward, even if it's not per se um, a closely COVID related issue. So thank you again very much for your uh, submission today. Thank you, Councillor Butler. Other questions from councillors? Seeing none then, oh, I, I, I will come back to you, uh, Councillor Demota. I was just going to um, ask Mr. Melnick um, a couple of questions or, or make some comments um, myself. And I, I would begin, um, Mr. Melnick, with your reference to the potential to use most money. Um, and that is, uh, I think, uh, a grant from both senior levels of government, um, the, the details of which I think are still trying to be sorted out. Um, and I, I don't want to um, say too much because there is, there is some continuing uncertainty and um, perhaps later in today's agenda, there will be more discussion about this, but it, it does appear to me at least that there certainly is potential that um, the application of the most money could make a difference on the ultimate tax levy um, that will be determined with our tax rate bylaw in the spring. One of my concerns is having a degree of optimism in that regard that provides a real cushion for taxpayers and um, for the association that you represent. But because it is still just potential, we are left, at least I am left in this um, struggling position where um, I have to weigh cutting the budget now as is proposed by, by your association and others, um, which will ultimately mean reduction in services and also impacts um, our ability to deal with infrastructure needs. And then if we are able to use the most money as, as I suggest that perhaps we will be able to, to reduce the tax levy, we are now um, left without those services and have to come back and find some other way to address that. So I think that there are mechanisms that we can apply um, to, to pass a budget, which is only also a an expectation of the future. It, it's, not, it's not as if we have to spend every dollar that's approved in the budget. And we will look at this again, absolutely, um, in the spring when we, there will be more certainty about the most money. Um, but I do thank you for raising that. It is, a, I think, a, a really important part of this discussion. The other um, question that I had, and I, I, I do appreciate your, your discussion about the uh, the tax rate split um, and um, where there might be some uh, indication of being late to the game on the on the budget issue, you're certainly far in advance on that issue. So I, I thank you for that. Um, and we can deal with that as, as things unfold. I, I will suggest that ironically, um, as a result of that tax rate split, um, which as you say, has gone on for, for a number of years. And it's not that it is, um, ignored, but each year um, it is it is sort of superficially, I suppose, considered and, and just continued. Um, but because of that, uh, of course, with the approximately eight hundred thousand dollar reduction in taxes last year, it was the non-residential sector that saw the lion's share of that benefit. Because of course, that too is is divided on the on the tax rate split. So whatever that amounts to in percentage terms, roughly 75% of the tax reduction last year was a benefit to the non-residential sector and the remainder a benefit to the residential sector. Finally, and I, I apologize for going on, but I, I want to understand um, particularly um, what your request is um, with respect to, to us moving forward. Um, you have indicated reduction in both uh, taxes and utilities. To the extent that utilities are used and there's an intent to change to use them more for infrastructure, that seems to me to relate directly to the question that you raise 
about um, the allocation, <coughs> pardon me, the allocation of the expense for infrastructure. So you indicated that more residential units have been constructed of, of higher density. And the intent coming forward from administration is that yes, there is a servicing cost related to that. There's a maintenance cost for infrastructure. And one of the most equitable ways to get to that end is through the utility fee bylaw. Um, and I, I wonder whether you have any comments. I appreciate that you, you don't like the, to see um, the increase in utility fees, but if we discount the increase and simply look at the changing model, do you see benefit in that model to get to the very end that you are suggesting you prefer? And I think along with what you're saying, being involved in, in how we're changing the model would help all ratepayers understand how it's equitable and, and, and why some ratepayers need to pay more. Um, at this particular time, um, it, be, it, it came quite, um, unless you're directly involved on a day-to-day -day basis, um, a change in a model that was being proposed and originally um, was a bit of a shock. And again, a lot of us aren't always um, as knowledgeable and need to read up and, and catch up to be, able to, to be able to understand how the overall impact is. And I think that's where I was going from the point of moving into the future, how we could work together so that there is an opportunity to understand and perhaps there'll be other dialogue which will assist all rate payers. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Melnick. Um, Councillor DeMota, you had your hand up earlier. Yeah, I, um, unless no one else wants to, to go ahead and say anything or ask Mr. Melnick of anything. Okay, no, go ahead. Um, no, it's good. I'm glad we're having this conversation. And, and you know what, when it comes to these levels of decisions and the effect that it has on our, our stakeholders, I think uh, the more collaboration that we can have uh, and the more uh, communications that we can have between all groups is, is good. And we have to sit at the table and, and hammer this thing out together. We can't just make uh, decisions based on what we think is best. There's There's got to be some common ground somewhere. And, you know, having said that, you know, that's the cloudy part where we have to find out where the lesser of the evils is right now, because um, there's going to be we've experienced pain and there's going to be more pain. Um, and it's, you know, on one side, if we cut, it's going to affect, you know, uh, services and jobs on one side. And then if, if we if we increase, uh, it's going to affect bottom lines and jobs on the other side. So uh, we have to find some common ground on what's going to work best with uh, for everybody, and there's not going to be a solve-all solution. But as I said, uh, you know, I'm looking forward uh, to working on this and then future uh, initiatives uh, discussing the tax split and again resort municipality status if if that ever comes down the road because I think that's an important thing. And and like I said, now that everybody's listening to each other. I think we're we're good to line ourselves up for a perfect storm. Um, Mr. Malik, would you be interested in, in uh, having further discussions on this and, and having regular uh, discussions on the reality of our future and how we're going to get out of this together? I think along with the chamber, the JHA or Jasper Hotel Association would be happy to be at the table to be able to engage, yes. Um, the format and what would be, uh, you know, is yet to be determined. But certainly it would seem to be along with the spirit of what's being discussed here that as we move forward, um, if we weren't at the table, it would it would all be a mute point today. Yeah, well, and I appreciate that. And I can't speak for the rest of council, but it, it's certainly my desire to, to have more stakeholder engagement, particularly on uh, higher level processes that are going to affect the community and uh, you know the the stakeholders themselves. So um, thank you very much again for your time. Sorry again. Uh... <clears throat> 
I had a quick freeze on my computer screen, but thank you, uh, Councillor Demota. Councillor Butler, is is your hand up? Yeah, it was. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted and uh, thank you again for those clarifications, Mr. Melnick. I wanted to take this opportunity to uh, mention two things. And the first is that on your point with respect to the suddenness with which um, the question of the change to utilities um, billing has come along and opportunities to understand impacts and effects. So I'll have more to say about that when we address the bylaw itself in the upcoming agenda item. But on that particular point of the time to consider how this would affect each sector in the community and individual businesses and individuals, I'm gonna agree with you. I don't think there has been time. I don't think there has been adequate opportunity to have discussions with those most affected. And I just wanted to make that point and there'll be more about that later. The second point I wanna make is not in respect to um, this Mr. Melnick's presentation specifically, but to both of them. And that is around the question of building reserves. Um, it has been mentioned on a couple of occasions and it's really fair to mention that um, this budget it's, I think there's a perception that this budget proposal would build reserves and that money would be put into reserves where, where reserves are sort of seen as savings accounts. Um, and I hope that everyone would understand that in fact, this budget would not build reserves. Over the 2021, if this budget would pa were passed, there would be a net draw on reserves. Um, it's one of the uh, vagaries of the way in which we deal with budgets that all capital allocations show as money going into reserves. So I just would like um, all observers, all public to understand that there's certainly no attempt either through utilities nor through taxes to actually build reserves in this difficult year. The money going into reserves is simply there to be used for what administration sees as pressing and immediate uh, needs. The question of building reserves is I think we all understand something that we're gonna to have to deal with in the future. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to clarify that. And I believe I'm accurate in, in my interpretation of how those transfers to reserves would work in the coming year under this proposal. So thanks very much again, Mr. Moment. Thank you, Councillor Butler. Are there any other questions for Mr. Ralph Melnick? Or um, Mr. Justin Melnick, uh, there was some indication that there might be a follow-up afterwards. Councillor Gerno. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you, Council. Uh, thank you for your presentations, uh, Melnick. Uh, in my discussion that I've had with some of your members, uh, I've basically requested that you guys submit more letters more specific information. Uh, you know, you, you use the words significant in decrease. Uh, you mentioned revenues being down 50%. To me, that's lack specificity, lack specifics. And I'm very sympathetic to your cause. I mean, we are one industry town and it's the hotels basically, and we've relied on you for a long time. So thank you for that. However, uh, just remind me of the comments that were made by Councillor Butler and that the taxation for this year is still less than it was in 2019. We are a fixed cost operation. We don't have profits. We build reserves in, uh, as a way of savings to reduce the impact when we have to build capital uh, contribution. So we don't have a lot of movement. We don't have a lot of flexibility. Uh, so the budget that's presented so far has been basically what I consider bare bones, certainly bare bones and increase. And uh, I think uh, I will certainly feel for the business community, there's no doubt about that. And we'll uh, take in your, your, your comments and the consideration of the budget. But again, I just want to remind that we are a fixed cost operation. Uh, you know, some people see that there's a lot of fat in the organization. So for example, uh, let me assure you, it's not the case. Uh, I've been on council for three years and I've worked hard to make sure that unnecessary expenses uh, are, are 
are reduced or eliminated altogether. So thank you for your presentation and I will uh, bear in mind your comments in future in the future deliberations of the budget and utilities. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Juneau, Councillor McGrath. Thank you, Mayor Ireland. While I don't have any questions for either Mr. Melnick, I would like to thank you for your presentations this morning. And I would like to thank you for bringing perspective to council. As we all know, there has been so many unknowns. We faced this last spring with things changing from day to day and hour to hour. And we've faced this this last week. We finished our council meeting last week with a higher level of um, unknowns than two hours after our council meeting ended. We're finding out more information and the current status of businesses is being affected on an hour to hour basis. And I, I respect and appreciate you bringing everything forward that you brought forward. Um, we certainly are your voices and this process is here to represent everyone. And um, I'll certainly take your recommendations and your questions and concerns into consideration as we move through this process. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGrath. Councillor keller -Rampi. I also want to thank you both for your presentations. Um, just, I want to do a little follow-up. Um, you mentioned that the hotels are down 50%. Well, I can assure you there's some small businesses in town that are down 80 to 85%. You know, our community has been really hit. And I think many of our businesses thought that we wouldn't go into the second wave of COVID and we would have a Christmas to recover. And that's not the case. And we all know that have worked in tourism for many years that if you don't make it over Christmas, you don't make it. You hope for spring break, and I don't think that's gonna be happening. I think we're in this for a while. And so I do thank you for your presentations. We have a lot to think about in our deliberations today. Thank you both, Mr. Malmix. Thank you, Councillor Kelleher MP. I see no further hands up. Um, so again, I will thank you, uh, Mr. Melnick. I see you are unmuted. Did you did you wish a final comment? Just uh, again, appreciation of the ability to present to council and and I understand the next part of your meeting and the next part of your morning is going to be uh, a long and and hard discussions and I appreciate everyone's uh, comments and patience and I look forward to the decisions that will be coming. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, thank you for your presentation and uh, the previous Mr. Melnick, thank you and the Chamber of uh, Commerce for your presentation. Um, and yes, I invite you to, to stay tuned. Um, to this, to this venue as we move along in our agenda with um, the really meaty subjects um, which bring you to us today. So I will say that uh, agenda item four is now completed. We can move to agenda item five. Uh, is there any business arising from the previous minutes? That is either the regular meeting of December 1st or the special meeting of December 8th. Councillor Journeau. Thank you. Uh, no specific uh, business arising, but I just want to comment on the fact that we uh, get the support from our superintendent of Jasper National Park in endorsing our uh, bylaw as quickly as he has. He's done that more than once, and it's nice to see that uh, he's very uh, prompt in endorsing the work that we do for our community. So we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Juneau. Anything else arising from either of the minutes, December 1st or December 8th? I see no indication, um, which takes us then to agenda item six. We have no department reports um, listed. I see no hand up from Mr. Greathead, so I will carry on to agenda item seven, um, which is bylaws. And as Councillor Journeau, um, just indicated we do have um, certification from the superintendent with respect to our temporary compulsory face covering amending bylaw, um, which received 
second reading um, at our special meeting a week ago and is back now with certification. So it is presented to us for third reading today. Um, I am going to suggest, um, I, I won't make a, a motion, but I, I leave it open if, if anyone else is interested. Um, and given, um, as Councillor McGrath just indicated, within hours of our meeting a week ago, um, the province acted um, and sub significant changes occurred, um, many of which, or some at least of which, um, cover the same area as covered by the amendment to our temporary compulsory face covering amending bylaw, that is uh, the treatment of face coverings in indoor workplaces. Um, and because the field is now occupied, um, I would suggest that we may wish to defer third reading of this bylaw um, and confirm that what we have proposed is um, almost identical to what the province has imposed. I, I don't like the idea of leaving any uncertainty for our own public as to whether they are in compliance with either the provincial regulation or the municipal bylaw. At the time we passed second reading, um, there was confusion about whether and what the province might do now that it is clear that they have entered the field. Um, there, the urgency is reduced and I would like the time to compare provincial and municipal rules and see that we are not subjecting our own residents to any um, confusion or misunderstanding about what the rules are here. So just a suggestion, it is here for um, a third reading. If we choose to give it third reading, it has received certification, um, but that's where we stand. Councillor McGrath. Thank you for your insight, Mayor Ireland. I completely agree with your statement on possibly deferring the face covering amending bylaw third reading. I see this as a, a public health concern. And from the get go, we were hoping that the province would step in into the face covering bylaw and mandate the rules for face covering so that we in municipal government and local government didn't need to step into a jurisdiction or an authority that didn't feel so natural or that we don't have ex experience or expertise in. And I would be um, certainly in favor of deferring this as you've suggested. Thank you, Councillor McGrath. Uh, Councillor Juneau. Uh, in keeping with the comment area that you have just made, can uh, we take credit for the leadership provided for the province to follow? <laughs> Councillor Butler. I certainly don't have any, pro thank you, Your Worship. I don't have any difficulties deferring this. Um, the entire province is under essentially these restrictions anyway for a month from I guess last Tuesday, so we're not in a real rush. What I would like to point out and my reason for still being in favor of passing this bylaw, if not today, then another day is the purpose statement, uh, item 2.1, where we have stated that the bylaw would be in force in effect during any period while the community of Jasper is subject to enhanced status. And I think that is in a way the most important clause in the bylaw because what we have deliberately done is pointed out that um, these restrictions, while they may be relaxed, if Jasper's uh, case count reduced, if Jasper's case count in future were to rise above whatever the, um, the um, you know, relative to population threshold is, that this bylaw would automatically come back into place. And I think that is an important difference between uh, the effect of our bylaw and potentially the effect of provincial restrictions. So while I'm happy to wait, I did want to make the point that there is that specific um, reference in our bylaw, which we may find is valuable and important and may on its own be a reason to pass a bylaw. But I certainly agree with taking a little time to check it against the uh, provincial standards and 
you know, try to look for consistency where we can. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Butler, and, and a point um, very well made, and I, I do agree that is one of the uh, the primary benefits of the bylaw as we passed it, that it, it could go in and out of effect depending on our, our status, and you are quite right to point that out. However, we are we are covered now until, uh, I think, December, the, or pardon me, January the 10th, approximately, um, and we were in the unusual position a week ago of, in fact, um, drafting a bylaw live on screen, um, which gave our administration no real time to, to do the analysis. And given that we are in the middle of budget, um, there might be some need for a bit of analysis. So if it is the will of council, I would, I would propose that this come back um, on our January the 5th um, regular council meeting agenda and we can then consider um, whether um, any fine tuning is required and potentially give it third reading at that time, having had the opportunity for a bit of analysis and knowing that in the interim, um, our public is protected by the provincial um, regulation, which is in force at least until um, early January. If I see, um, no opposition, then I will say that that is um, by the consent of council and we'll just ask administration to bring back um, item 7.2 of today's agenda um, on our agenda for our first meeting in January, which I believe is January the 5th. That takes us then to agenda item 7.3. Um, utility fees levy and collection bylaw 2021, which is before us for first and second reading um, with the intent that it would be back um, subject to certification from the superintendent of Jasper National Park for third reading on January the 5th so that we could implement um, whatever new fees um, might be associated with the final bylaw early in January so that we're in a position to get bills out. Uh, I would suggest that the procedurally proper way to do this um, is to give the matter first reading and then discuss amendments, um, but I can understand that there may be some hesitancy um, among councillors to in fact, make a motion to give this bylaw first reading as it as it currently stands. Um, I will turn first then to um, Mr. Greathead to speak to the bylaw, and then there can be questions directed at Mr. Greathead regarding the matter or or others in administration, of course. And we will see whether we can be in a position to make a motion with respect to first reading and then deal with amendments, if any, thereafter. Mr. Greathead. Good morning, Your Worship and Council. Um, as we've been going through and reviewing the uh, utility rates and uh, just making sure that we are um, really targeting um, fairness and equity on the billing and um, we Notice some inconsistencies and some problems that, uh, or as, as administration finds some problems within the bylaw um, as it exists right now. Uh, one of the, uh, I can get, I would like to um, ask uh, Ms. Melanchuk to speak to the items highlighted in yellow on the um, agenda package. Um, the hi items highlighted in green, though, are ones that I would like to address. Uh, specifically um, 5.1, where it shows that if they're not hooked up to the water system, um, they only pay a portion of the operating cost of the wastewater treatment plant. Now, we find this to be very problematic um, within operations and the revenues um, that we're uh, receiving from these uh, properties that are, are hooked up, and, and namely it is just two, um, the uh, Whistler Campground line and the JPL line, but they're actually paying about 10% of what residents pay for sewage treatment. 
um, once it comes down to it, uh, based on volume. There is, uh, I, I understand that this, this agreement was made probably 20 years ago uh, and hasn't been revisited since, uh, is my understanding. Uh, but there is a huge, huge um, disparity in the cost and, and the revenues um, uh, received for the uh, treatment of the wastewater at the uh, wastewater treatment plant here that comes down. Further complicating this issue, um, the way uh, the design of the line, it's an inverted siphon uh, that goes underneath, that goes down the hill underneath the Athabasca uh, River and then back up. So at the pump cycle on about 17 to 19 times a day and each time that uh, kicks in, so just a little over once an hour, uh, it really upsets the uh, process and system because we have such a huge surge on this. And therefore it's constantly um, washing out the bugs, uh, affecting process and our operators that are there have to be you know, quite aware um, that it is like a dynamic situation. Every time that pump kicks on, you know, they, they're, they're adapting for this. Um, in years future, we are looking, um, you know, we have been working with the uh, contract operator at the wastewater treatment plant for some options. Um, and we're talking that we may need to actually have some sort of header tank or containment tank in there to reduce the surging. So this is another avenue that um, admin has, has parked out as a, as a bit of an inequity or unfairness. Um, they are getting a discounted rate. And again, it's about 10% of what residents pay for uh, the volume of wastewater. The second item is on 9.2. Um, and this applies to pretty much all the truck sewage. And the truck sewage, I've mentioned to council numerous times, that it is one of the hardest things that we have to treat at the wastewater plant. Um, sometimes the sewage comes in and to feed it into the system especially if it's gone septic, um, which means that it have a, you know, it's, it's gone black. Um, it's very high in ammonia. It's very high in, um, you know, the, the thickness. Um, and for us to be charging at 0.8 of what the rest of the water system or the wastewater system is charged just doesn't even make sense. Um, it, it's much more um, expensive to treat these truck sewages. So we're looking for, I'm looking for those two specifically. And if I can ask uh, Ms. Malinchuk to join in uh, and she can speak to the items in yellow on the highlights. Thank you, Mr. Greathead. Good morning, council. Um, yes, yeah, so the yellow within the bylaw itself um, under 1.0, 1.1 1 .1 and 1.2 is, Nothing new, it's just the change of um, um, which would rescind the old bylaw and bring in the new. Um, but it's highlighted as a change within the, the text of the document. Um, within water rate, um, I removed all of the numbers within the text of the document. So if you see in schedule one, it is now just part of the schedule rather than stating the number within the text. I found it very um, confusing to look for the um, numbers and I just tried to simplify how it was laid out so that everybody would understand um, the schedule. And I think it's uh, presented in a, a much clearer um, rate now. Um, and then with the water rate, we um, want to remove the word solely um, to uh, water rate because to, um, it just doesn't connect with that part of the bylaw. And in addition with 3.2, that every leaseholder of a lot or land parcel in the municipality that is connected to the water system shall pay a base rate by meter size as per schedule one. So that was um, in addition because of the new change and discussion of having the uh, base rate by meter size. Um, in 4.0, what we would like to see is a removal of the combined water and sewer rate as um, alluded to in a prior year by um, His Worship was um, that it wasn't really a combined water and sewer rate, it's a sewer rate. Um, and it is stated within schedule one. 
and um, it would be removing the words to both the water and sewer system. And it would be also removing the words, the equivalent combined rate would be the sum of the water rate and the sewer rate because we don't look at it that way um, when we are applying the rates within um, the levies. And then the 4.2 would be uh, an addition again because of uh, the sewer system having a base rate and that is um, also in schedule one. And then a 5.0, we would change the name to be sewer rate not connected to municipal water supply. And Mr. Great had just went over the details of that. In 6.11, it was just removing the dollar value attached to the text of the document again and moving it over to schedule one. Um, again, in bulk water was moving the number within the text to schedule one. And um, I believe, that is it for all of the yellow sections. And as you can see, the Schedule 1 is presented entirely differently. It gives the date that the uh, rate would be implied as per billing or additional or by cubic yard or meter and how it's being um, uh, read. And also if any are calculated by yearly or can be calculated by yearly, we put the calculations in there as well. And uh, that is it for the changes to that bylaw from the prior one. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Melanchuk, and thank you, Mr. Greathead, uh, for those explanations. Questions from councillors? Councillor Keller Hampi. During these discussions, I had been quite vocal about how this had to be fair. And I was on the understanding that Whistler Campground and all outside OCAs were going to be not necessarily for water, but would be metered for sewage like everybody in town. And I'm not in agreement with this till it's fair and equitable. Plus, I don't think we can bring this in this year. I think we should use our current structure, increase it by CPI, and look at this for next year. We've heard from both the Chamber and from the Hotel Association. They'd like to be involved, would like to know what these changes are going to mean to their businesses. Um, we've already talked about how we wanted to do um, a grid system with it also. And um, I think Council has to look at this further before we bring in this new bylaw. Thank you, uh, Councillor Keller uh, I was reading and saw two hands. I don't know who was first, but I will go to Councillor Demota and then to Councillor Butler. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Mayor, and uh, through you to. Uh, Mrs. Malinchuk, uh, I appreciate the, the, the way you've uh, addressed the changes in the bylaw and, uh, and detailed the, the amounts in the schedules. Um, easier to, to understand for sure. Um, for the rest of council, I think that I would be more interested in making a move towards uh, fixing the, the issues as opposed to uh, dealing with uh, rate changes. I think that we, we had enough of an increase last year, and I know that there are some fixed costs and, and maybe we should be addressing those uh, right now. But if we start taking care of the issues like we have with the JPL sewage and, and other um, areas in the community where we're, we're not getting what we should be getting for uh, the service, um, I think that's where we start growing out of the hole. It's not gonna take care of it overnight. Uh, but I, I think we need to work again with our partners and find a way to slowly climb out of this or as quickly as possible, let's say, so that uh, we're not really putting on major hits. Uh, like I said, there's going to be some pain and, and this could be some of the pain that, that we need to face together until we can uh, level out at some point down the road. Now, having said that, through some conversations, I do recall, and I don't know if it was said here, that uh, initially when we went uh, 
to start out the wastewater treatment plant that uh, Jasper Park Lodge contributed some seed money or and there was some sort of agreement. I don't know where that is or if there was something signed, but there was a, a, some type of understanding or a memorandum of understanding on how we would do that. And if that has expired or uh, I'd hate for someone to find that down the road after we've made changes and, and I'd like to be like transparent and, and address that. And, um, but also having said that, if, if, if we're operating at a loss, we need to address that and, and discuss how we're going to make it work for the collective. Thank you, Councillor Demota. Councillor Butler. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Um, on the November 24th committee of the whole meeting, council requested, I'm reading from the minutes, an illustration of what a few different model water bills would look like in 2021 and how that would differ relative to 2020 fees. And we have not received that. My difficulty here is that um, while I can understand the individual pieces of the bylaw uh, presented, the draft bylaw presented here, I cannot understand their impact on the resident utility users that I represent. Um, I do not understand um, and could not tell um, inform, for example, uh, downtown business, uh, hotel, um, an apartment building owner, how this would look for them in 2021 relative to how it would look in 2020. I just don't have that information. Beyond that, um, I'm still struggling and I, I, I do appreciate that a lot of work and effort has gone into developing this scenario on the part of administration and I appreciate it a lot, but the fact is that we have been told since I sat on council that we really had a pressing need to address our utility buildings. And I know we need to do that, there's no doubt. Um, and the community needs to understand that we have to raise a lot more money to support our underground utilities and our wastewater treatment plant over the coming years. But I am really struggling with how we do that. I ha I'm having a great deal of difficulty um, becoming convinced that the direction we're going is a fair and equitable one. I am not convinced that it makes sense to raise those dollars through consumption-based utility buildings as opposed to through taxation, because I am not convinced that it, it fairly distributes the benefits. So all that being on the table for me and um, you know, a pretty broad selection of changes that need to be made in this utility bylaw, a pretty broad um, reference to problems that exist that should be addressed, but we're not quite ready to address. I'm afraid that I've lost my appetite to um, go down this road at all. Um, and I am on side with uh, what Councillor Kelleher MP has suggested that we increment the current bylaw for some sort of a cost of living increase and uh, push up all of this into the new year. I am absolutely solidified in that view by the input we heard today, which pointed out that uh, there just simply hasn't been time for consultation with some of the users that would be most affected. And I acknowledge there just hasn't been time. We can't do everything. Everybody's in catch up mode. Everybody's trying to just do our best in this difficult year. So that's not a criticism, it's just the reality of it. But I would vote against um, giving this bylaw first reading. Other comments? Uh, go ahead, Mr. Greathead. Your Worship, to speak to uh, Councillor DeModa's uh, inquiry there about the, uh, the um, build that, or the contribution that JPL made towards the wastewater treatment plant. I believe that they um, had signed a 20 year deal with the town uh, that they would repay up to a million dollars worth of the water plant construction and that um, ends this year uh, coming. I have had discussions with the management and staff at JPL um, advising them that I, you know, it's there that they actually contribute about 17 to 20% of our total flow, but they only pay six to 8% of our total um, operational cost. 
so there there is quite a bit there so i have had those discussions with jpl i can tell i can tell you that they haven't been exactly cheerful um you know it's it's an awkward situation but i am looking for um equity so that's the only reason why we brought this and why we're hi highlighting this one issue here mr mayor if i may respond uh yes councillor demota um and then councillor mcgrath um, but thank you uh, mr Greathead. Yes, and, and through you, thank you uh, for that information. I appreciate having that discussion. I'm sorry I, if I read it or someone told me somewhere and uh, or if you had already addressed uh, that um, contract and I apologize, uh, but it's nice to have that information again. And uh, one thing that I do uh, want to say is that I'm very grateful for the level of detail, although sometimes confusing to me, but you know, it could just be me on, on the, uh, on everything that's involved. However, you know, having someone for, uh, of Mr. Uh, Greathead's uh, aptitude and background, bringing all this to the forefront is uh, was a necessity for us. And the fact that it's here, and you know, it's so alarming. It, it is it is a, a hard pill to swallow. But um, you know, now that it's on the surface, uh, again, we have an opportunity to work with our stakeholders. I'm sorry if, if I keep repeating that, but it, it's just one of these things that it is the most difficult year now uh, going forward to, to start bringing up uh, any um, incremental changes, large ones anyway, for the, for the people that are most effective. So affected. So we have to figure out uh, a way and how we're going to do this together. And, and I think that there, there'll be some good uh, outcomes of this. And I do appreciate all the work that's been, that's been put into this and it's, it's not going to be done in vain. I guarantee you that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Demota. Councillor McGrath. Thank you very much, Mayor Ireland. I, I echo the statements made by Councillor Demota and I too am extremely grateful and appreciative of all the work that has went into this for many, many weeks. And um, I would like to thank administration for everything that they have put into this. I 100% agree that we need more equity and particularly from the, the two mentioned um, wastewater contributors. We need some tools and we need to find more equity in, in those systems. And I would be in agreement of moving through something that would find us more equity for the upcoming year in that um, domain only. I, I understand that we have so much work to do to achieve a sustainable future for our utilities in Jasper, but I agree with the statements made by the Jasper Park Chamber of Commerce and the Hotel Association that now is just not the time to do that. We have lots of lots of work to do, but I agree with Councillor Butler and Councillor Keller MP and Demota in seeking a small incremental CPI like increase for this year, keeping things status quo and um, moving forward to lots of discussions in the new year. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor McGrath, and thank you all for, for your comments. Um, I, uh, I have some specific um, questions and one in particular, um, and whether this is directed at Mr. Greathead, um, Mrs. Melanchuk, or, or anyone else in the organization, I, I will direct it um, to you, Mr. Greathead, and through you to whomever you might choose. Um, it seems to me that the content of the bylaw is an attempt to achieve um, more equity than is currently in the system. And it seems to me that everybody agrees that equity is a goal. And in fact, it's one of the strategic priorities identified by council. So it's a move in the right direction, but it also seems to me that the issue um, really that touches home with um, taxpayers and those who presented to us today is the actual cost of implementing uh, this form of equity. So I wonder whether the principles can be confirmed in the bylaw with a change in the bylaw, an addition, which indicates um, in a general sense, so a separate clause that where rates are subject to schedule one, 
Schedule one is a document that may be amended by resolution of council. And we could then by resolution um, adopt a schedule which mimics existing rates with all of their inequities, but have confirmed a change in principle in the content of the file of the bylaw. So it is a move in principle towards achieving equity, but without um, increasing costs. But I, I know um, in past we have never landed on a clause that would allow us to keep a bylaw in place over multiple years and simply change the schedule. And so if, if you can address um, Mr. Greathead or as I say, direct that to someone else in the organization to address whether it is possible to approve a bylaw um, and leave a schedule of rates subject to resolution by council. And then during the course of the year, we could look further and deeper into the schedule itself and adjust that um, to meet the needs of the community. Your Worship, I think the municipality would be best served actually if we had a uh, standard rates and fees by law as many municipalities do and that can be um, brought back as and when needed uh, to council for input and for revision. Um, so that way, uh, for, the, for example, this year we had an increase uh, in our uh, tipping fees or the uh, part of the uh, Hinton landfill where we're part of the uh, West Yellowhead Regional Waste Management Authority. So that increase went up 10%. Um, we really didn't have much of a say in it. So we built it into the budget for this year. But having said that, if we um, if we had the rates and fees bylaw, it's something that can be um, addressed very rapidly and very quickly. And I really don't, it's not, I, I can't see it happening. We've had the discussion um, previously but I think we're going to need the capacity once the new CAO is in uh, to bring this actually forward. Thank you for that. In the meantime, um, I take it that there is an imperative to have a bylaw um, with respect to utility rates in place early in the new year. Yes, Your Worship. Um, you know, administratively, we were saying if uh, if one thing had to go to uh, get through today, um, it really does need to be the um, the utility bylaw in front of you. Councillor Butler, go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Greathead. Last year, we passed a utility rate bylaw in April, and um, that was that replaced um, the utility rate bylaw that we had passed uh, earlier in the year. I don't know when we passed the original utility fees levy and collection bylaw 2020. I think it was maybe in the first week of January. But I'm just wondering what was the change that was made? Um, why did we, I, I simply don't remember why we passed a utility rate bylaw in April, and I, I can't compare. I could answer the question myself by comparing the 2020A with 2020, but 2020 bylaw isn't uh, any longer on the website. So I know there's precedent for us making some sort of a change in the course of the year last year, but I don't know what the change was. Do you have any, can you shed any light on that for me? Your Worship to uh, Councillor Butler, my understanding is that um, there was no fee changes um, during that. There was only a change to the clause on penalties. Ah, I believe you're right. Yeah, thank you. But I would um, make the point that we could pass a um, uh, bylaw similar to our 2020 bylaw um, and proceed with that. And we could still consider making changes in the course of the year or uh, no later than in time for implementation for 2021. And that would be my preference. Thank you. I'm sorry, uh, Councillor Butler, um, could you explain again the process that you have just outlined, just so I, I am 
absolutely clear about <clears throat> about what it is you're proposing? Oh, I'm proposing um, essentially the, the same thing that Councillor Keller, MP, proposed earlier on, that uh, I'd be prepared to support a bylaw that, it, that looks substantially the same as the 2020 bylaw, I would um, be willing to consider some sort of an incremental or cost of living increase to it. But I, um, as I stated earlier, wouldn't support uh, readings of the existing bylaw because I'm unconvinced of the, uh, I'm just not ready to look at some of the changes, the substantial changes within that bylaw. So I don't know where that leads us, but um, I myself, and I'm only one councillor, but I can't vote in favor of reading this bylaw as presented. All right. Um, is it possible, uh, and again, Mr. Greathead, um, to you, but through you to whoever in the organization um, might be best equipped to respond. Is it possible now um, for a motion from a counselor that council give first reading to bylaw 232 in a form that replicates bylaw 226 subject to a cost of living adjustment to all current rates contained in bylaw 226. Is that procedurally um, a way that we could approach this today so that we can get first and second reading of a bylaw for today and certification in the coming weeks and third reading as projected on January the 5th. Your worship, if I can defer this to uh, Ms. Nadon. Thank you, Mr. Greathead, through to Mayor Ireland. Um, if, if that is the will of council, I would suggest that we uh, defer this agenda item to later in the agenda so we can prepare some kind of version, again, on the fly, but um, to get in front of council. My concern with the proposed CPI increase is, does anyone know what CPI is currently? And is it a monthly, is it an annual? And I, I haven't looked at that recently, but I'm thinking it could even be a decrease. Um, so without that information, it, it, I find it a bit difficult to, to send council in that direction without having the full information. Um, yeah, anyway, that's my reply to this question. I have other information to share perhaps on previous questions, but I will leave it at that for now. Uh, thank you for that. Um, last I looked, which was Tuesday of last week, by coincidence, um, cost of living was 2.1% um, on an annual basis. Uh, Councillor DeMota. Yeah, sorry, I was just looking in the wrong place. I was looking at the StatsCan website and it said uh, the year change in the 12 months was 0.7%, but um, I could be looking at something completely wrong. But it, it, it's not my wheelhouse. That's just something that I quickly pulled up. Okay. Councillor Butler? My intent was not to say specifically um, a CPI increase, that's why I said or something like that. And I, I suspect that Councillor Keller MP was in the same place that um, I think we recognize that um, it's never a good idea to just leave the rates the same as last year. At the very least, we have to not lose ground. I mean, we could pick a percentage, we could increment them by 3%. I, I don't know that we serve ourselves well by starting to debate what sort of CPI measurement we would use. So I just wanted to throw it in there that I myself prepared to see some incrementing over last year, but I'm not prepared to support at this point structural changes. So pick a percentage. I think we could get this done. Also, I think that we could pass this in January. And um, it seems to me our worst case scenario would be that a first billing cycle would go out at um, last year's rates, though 
maybe I'm incorrect in that, but I'm wondering, you know, what our drop dead rate is. I know last year we gave third reading on January 7th. I, um, I don't know what would happen if we gave third reading on January 15th this year or something like that in the coming year, I mean. Thank you, uh, Councillor Butler. And, and we did uh, on one occasion earlier this year, manage to get first, second and third reading um, all encompassed in, in one meeting um, with the, the uh, assistance of the superintendent of Jasper National Park, um, given some of the, well, it, that is still a possibility. So it could all get deferred potentially to January 5th, but um, there is, uh, I think, an urgency from the administrative perspective that there must be something in place as early as possible in the new year. Mr. Greathead. Your Worship, Ms. Melanchuk's trying to get in or get your attention. Oh, well, she has it. <laughs> Go ahead, Ms. Melanchuk. Thank you, Your Worship. In response to Councillor Butler's, um, um, what Mr. Count, um, Butler was, uh, sorry, Councillor Butler was alluding to, um, yes, it, it's possible to um, keep the 2020 rates and, and adjust. Um, it would just mean that I would have to redo the budget um, to reflect those rates. Um, it, the budget would not work with what would be um, approved. We have to give, the reason we asked for uh, the approval in early January so that we can give proper notice to residents on their increases on the bill. So that means that if we don't, if we're not able to in January, then we won't be able to advertise until March on their new bills. Um, that the change, any kind of changes that will occur. So that's that's the reason and why we ask for the, the, the bylaw to go through so that we can give proper notification to the residents um, and in the change to the levy. So yes, if, if we do go that route, it's possible, I will just have to rework the budget to reflect the change in the dollar values in the levy. I just want to make that clear, thank you. Thank you for uh, that contribution, uh, Mrs. Melanchuk. And um, sorry that I, I did not see that you were trying to get my attention, uh, but I am told that now that I am a co-host, if you raise your hand, I will see it. And I had one experiment where that actually worked. So try that again. Um, here we are, however, um, at a bit of, a, of an impasse. Um, there is um, administrative efficacy in moving this forward um, for early January. Uh, Ms. Nadon has suggested that with um, some bit of time today, we could still consider first and second reading of what would amount to um, a reintroduction of the existing bylaw 226, which was the 2020 utility rate bylaw with um, perhaps an increase in um, rates of, the uh, council could decide right now, two or 3% or two and a half percent, whatever they, whatever they choose and eliminate any reference to CPI and just give those instructions and uh, defer uh, agenda item 7.3 until later in the in the day and in fact we could bring it back um, under new business uh, which would allow an opportunity um, for staff to also work on that new bylaw during our in-camera session that is scheduled under 8.5 so from a from a work perspective um, it's possible we could still deal with it today i know there was some suggestion that perhaps we don't have to um, wait that long. Oh, pardon me, that we don't have to move that quickly, that we could do this into the new year. Um, Councillor Butler, I see your hand up. And then uh, Mr. Dawn, I, I see you waving at me on my screen. So after Councillor Butler, um, I will call on Ms. Dawn. Go ahead, Councillor Butler. 
thank you very much. I, I appreciate the opportunity to speak again. And, and I only am throwing suggestions out in an honest attempt to try to simplify things. Uh, Mrs. Malinchuk mentioned that um, if we don't pass the bylaw as um, presented, that she will have to rework the budget. And I mean, I, I hate the thought of that, but the reality is I have a strong sense that in upcoming discussions around the budget, that reworking the budget is going to become necessary. So I think that whatever we do, we're reworking the budget. And that has led me then to think about, well, we also have the problem of fair notice to the community, given the timing of utility bills going out, um, of any increase. Um, and the difference that we're talking about, if we impose some kind of a CPI increase to the budget would be so little. I, I mean, another direction we could go is just keep the rates the same. Um, take the 2020 um, utility rates bylaw, cross out, the zero put in one um, and put the same rates in effect. One of the conversations we're gonna be having in the upcoming budget conversation is uh, if we're not prepared to increase the taxes and the utility rates as something like what administration is proposing, what are we gonna do? Are we prepared to borrow some money to um, get ourselves through the next year? And all I want is to make things as easy and simple as possible for administrations. So we could just use the same numbers and no notice needs to be given to the public because their numbers won't, their billings won't change and we can move this one forward. Thank you, uh, Councillor Butler, Ms. Nadon. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I would like to request a recess. So Mr. Greathead, Mrs. Malinchuk and I can confirm on, confer on um, what, what potentially our paths forward here. And I feel like um, I'm, I'm sort of reiterating what Councillor Butler just said that significant changes to the utility rates bylaw do, does have an impact on the operating budget and therefore on the rest of the agenda for today. And uh, if I, I, I don't know if I can do that, it is a first, <laughs> if, if I can request a recess so Mr. Greathead, Mrs. Malinchuk and I can confer offline on the phone and just return to this in five or 10 minutes. Thank you, uh, Ms. Nadon. It was about time for a recess in any event um, and whether you can or you can't um, is largely immaterial. I think it's a, it's a great suggestion. I, I appreciate that um, council, or pardon me, that administration has to get their heads um, together a bit to assist us through this difficult time. Um, so I will in fact um, call a recess. It is now um, 11.15. I am quite prepared to call um, a 15 minute recess. I, I don't want you to uh, feel rushed. Uh, that is longer than we normally have, but it's still a short amount of time in the circumstances. So I will uh, call a recess at this time and we will reconvene at 11.30. So. Thank you for that suggestion. All right, thank you all. Uh, welcome back. Um, I did have an opportunity during the, the recess to have a very brief um, phone call with uh, Mr. Greathead. So I will bring that up shortly. Councillor Demota, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just had something written down before we went on our break and and I'm glad that you said uh, most of us have arrived um, back to the meeting and I wanted to bring up most and I'm sorry that I keep banging this drum but you know even as far as our utilities go if we pass something uh, to the degree which is less than what is desirable or necessary um, is there something in the wording or a probability where we can make some of that up to offset what we could have been charging and, and retain some money from most to apply towards our utilities initiatives, the things that we need for infrastructure and that we can't complete or go ahead with because of the pandemic. I think, like, I think that there's an opportunity to be creative here, but I'm still in this 
clouded area of what we can do with this money. Like it, we've heard, we've had an announcement of it for quite some time and I'm not blaming administration for it because I understand how confusing it is, but until we can really figure out a path of where we can use these things to, to help alleviate the burden for 2021 on, on our residential and commercial taxpayers, um, I, I think we need to, to spend as much time collectively as possible on that. And I'm not just saying stick it all in administration because I want to help. So what can I do to, to get some more information or find some ways to apply some concepts to what we could be using that $3 million for? Just throwing it out there. Right. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Councillor Demota. Um, we took that recess uh, specifically to allow administration to consider um, where we stand now in relation to the utility fees levy and collection bylaw 2021 um, and how that might impact the 2021 budget. And uh, I will certainly allow um, Mr. Greathead, Ms. Melanchuk or Ms. Nadon to speak further, but my understanding is that um, Given the nature of the discussion so far today, um, administration is in a bit of an impasse. And what is coming forward as a recommendation to resolve things um, for today is that the matter of the utility fees levy and collection bylaw for 2021 be um, deferred until January 5th, 2021, at which time there would be a hope at least of getting all three readings done in one day. That of course will take um, the assistance of the superintendent. But as I said earlier, um, we have had success in that regard before and I'm quite happy to, to call him about that. But <clears throat> council, or pardon me, administration needs some time to put such a bylaw together. Um, that bylaw has um, tremendous implications for the 2021 operating budget, which is also going to take some considerable work. And so jumping ahead um, to the next agenda item, which is 8.1, the request for decision for the operating budget, the request will be that council by resolution <clears throat> approve simply an interim operating budget based on the 2020 operating budget to allow municipal operations to carry on into 2021 and then the the actual 2021 budget will come back to us um, for further discussion once we set the utility um, rate bylaw um, and give councils or pardon me administration some clear direction on where we would like the landing point to be in terms of the operating budget. So the, the, the fresh recommendation, um, as I say, covers two points on today's agenda, both the agenda item 7.3, which is the utility fees levy. Um, so that would come back in the new year and a request that we simply today confirm spending based on the current 2020 operating budget because the work that is going to be required to redo the 2021 operating budget is going to be extensive given the nature of the changes to the utility fees levy and collection bylaw. Um, Mr. Greathead, um, to you and through you to any other staff member as you may think appropriate, um, is that a fair summation of, of uh, where administration is at um, after having had that um, brief recess to consider matters? Yes, Your Worship, I think you summed it up uh, quite succinctly there. The, um, you know, the utilities fees budget has a massive impact on the proposed operating budget and the proposed capital budget coming forward. So um, at this point, um, I would like to uh, request that on the 22nd, we have just clear direction on where we go with the budget. 
um, and pass the interim budget for now. And that will get us through to the new year. And then we're going to have um, a whole, whole, whole lot of work uh, ahead of us uh, early in the season. Thank you, Mr. Greathead. Um, I don't see other hands uh, from administration. I, I will turn to council. Um, comments or questions about where we are currently at? Councillor DeMoto? Well, given all the feedback that we've had and, and the discussions that we've had here and the assistance um, that we're getting from administration, I think is, is very positive. Um, I wasn't in a mood for for really moving for uh, pushing things into into the next year, but uh, I I did over the last over the weekend at least have come to the realization that that might be inevitable. And uh, you know I, I think looking at an eighteen percent um, utilities rate increase is is kind of hard to, to fathom at this point. And, and I'm glad at least that there's some discussion on um, working something a little bit more palatable for 2021 at least anyway and, and having some discussions on how we can improve that for the future so i appreciate everyone's efforts councillor butler thank you worship i have been one of those uh, fairly vocal in previous meetings against the idea of passing an interim budget um because honestly i think uh we needed to sort of collectively hold our own feet to the fire to move forward and on the decision making um, path. But I kind of realized that um, and my motivation for agreeing to this idea of uh, interim budget at 2020 levels is that if we were to not do so, we stand to just um, increase the workload for administration so heavily. And I'm really concerned about that. I frankly don't want to see administration um, crafting budget options for us to look at and, and then say, well, no, we think we like this or we want to take this out or we want to put that in um, and starting up a, some sort of a game of financial whack-a-mole. So I think it is the best way forward. And um, anything we can do to save administration the difficulty of of um, second guessing, of, you know, drafting budgets or making assumptions to put them in front of us, I think we have to do. So we, if, if we're gonna go ahead with an interim budget, then we have to immediately carry on um, through whatever process we decide is best to really come to a meeting of minds on what we think ultimately the 2020 budget would look like, whether that's going to involve um, factoring in most funding, which I wish it would, whether it's gonna factor in some additional borrowing, which has been suggested as a way to work ourselves through the upcoming difficult year. But let's put our minds to do that and not um, request additional drafts from administration without giving them really good direction on what they're likely to find um, would be ultimately agreed to by council. Not sure if I was clear in that. Please ask if I wasn't. Uh, no, that was uh, that was fine. Thank you, uh, Councillor Butler. Um, it appears to me that um, there is a growing consensus, at least, um, to defer the utility fees levy and collection bylaw twenty twenty one to. Um, January the 5th um, with the hope that, um, well, the expectation that administration can then present us um, a, a draft bylaw similar to what has been discussed today and with the hope that we might get through uh, first, second and third reading on January the 5th. So with respect to agenda item 7.3, I will ask in the negative, is there any objection to having that matter deferred until the regular meeting of January 5th, 2021? All right, seeing, seeing no objection, um, I will take that as direction from council then to administration that 
we will defer decision on agenda item 7.3 until that time. And I hope, and Mr. Greathead, you can confirm, uh, but my hope is that based on the discussion earlier today, there is some clarity about the nature of the bylaw, which council is inclined to support and which could come forward on January the 5th. Is, is that direction clear enough? I believe so, sir. Okay, thank you for that. So I will say then that with agenda item 7.3, um, we are complete, which takes us to agenda item eight and 8.1, which is the 2021 operating budget. And again, um, the basis of our discussion um, has been that um, the resolution may have to be um, approval of an interim operating budget to allow spending to continue into the new year. Um, and then to readdress this issue after council gives some further specific direction to administration um, with respect to ex expectations for the 2021 operating budget. So there are, there are two thoughts there. I think first we will need a motion to approve an interim operating budget, um, which will be standalone. And then I would suggest that we might um, defer further discussion to next week, Committee of the Whole, um, and try and nail down what we, what we expect. I think it's unreasonable to expect our staff to try and um, rebuild a budget um, between Christmas and New Year's. So I would think that we would not come back to visit um, the, the final 2021 operating budget until um, uh, perhaps into uh, the first meeting in February. And even then that may not be a decision date because things may still be unfolding. But I, I wanna be fair to staff um, and give them the, the time that they need. And I wanna be fair to council and, and not force the issue. There's been lots of um, interesting information come our way in the last couple of days. So a week to allow that to distill and then we get back to the table and sort out direction um, seems to me to be reasonable. Councillor McGrath. I agree with that direction, Mayor Ireland, and I'd be willing to make that motion that council move into a interim operating budget um, as a 2020 numbers. All right, thank you, uh, Councillor McGrath. I, I do have um, some text um, on that. So just to confirm um, as, it, as it will be your your motion, um, but the motion from Councillor McGrath, be it resolved that Council approve an interim operating budget based on the 2020 operating budget to allow municipal operations to carry on into 2021. Um, that is your motion, um, Councillor McGrath, thank you for that. Um, I do leave it, uh, of course, as always open to um, debate by council, but I would ask first, um, Mr. Greathead, can you confirm um, or through you to other members of administration, particularly uh, Mrs. Melanchuk, whether that wording satisfies administratively the requirements you have for um, continuing municipal operations into 2021? Uh, Ms. Nadon, uh, are you there? Are there available uh, or any concerns on this? I, I haven't myself. Thank you, Mr. Greathead. Um, the discussion we've had with, with Mr. Greathead and Mrs. Malinchak is should the interim budget be based on the 2019 levels or on the 2020 levels? And with the understanding that uh, 2020 is an odd one because there was a, a, a a significant number of additional net deficits that were approved after the 2020 operating budget was, was approved formally. Therefore, how what does that mean for municipal services or how do we operate? Um, that is why I added to the proposed motion that we, so we are able to carry on current service levels into 2021 with the understanding that this should be only for a few weeks, hopefully. So I guess what that does for council is that between now and the approval of a 
of the 2021 operating budget, administration should continue business as it currently is. And business as it currently is, is, is affected a significant amount by the current provincial restrictions. But in any event, if we put 2019 in there, that means then we could restaff and re implement anything that was removed in 2020 but 2020 also ties our hands in in a lot of ways in terms of what service provision we can carry forward so it is not a an ideal situation but i guess i'm i am satisfied with a, an interim budget based on the 2020 budget as long as there's an understanding that it's for a few weeks and it's only to to be able to have council delay that decision uh thank you uh Mr. Don, uh, Councillor McGrath, um, it was your motion and, and you're welcome to speak to it. Thank you. My intention of the motion is to allow administration to move forward as is um, currently being operated today. Um, further to the interim operating budget, my my hope for the budget would be to come back to around 2019 numbers, anywhere from 7.5 million to $8.5 million being requested, but then come up with ways in which we're going to fund that increase, um, perhaps by debenture and um, moving forward with um, many discussions around that in the spring when it comes to levying the taxation. But um, certainly intentions would be to allow administration to move through into January as is and to not disrupt any administration that's happening. Thank you, Councillor McGrath. Other comments from councillors? Councillor keller -Hurampi? Sorry, I agree with Councillor Borat. Like, you know, the municipality has to work forward. We have to come up with solutions on how we work with our community, our residents, our businesses. Um, I was hoping to pass the budget today, um, a base budget, and um, but I'm happy to go with the interim budget. Um, again, I think as Council, down the road on how we set our um, tax levy and that is all in the future but I agree with Councillor McGraw I think we need to look at an adventure um, we can't keep everything shut down for the year we do have to move forward we do I know um, each department will have to look at some savings but we do have a municipality to run and I believe that this year we may have to if we can't use some of the most grant towards the taxes then we may have to look at an adventure that's how I feel thank you Thank you, Councillor keller uh, Councillor Journal. Thank you. The uh, question I have regarding the 2020 budget is, does it include the budget deficits? Uh, the two that come to mind is the one for the uh, Children's Centre, and uh, which would be ongoing, but the one for the arena uh, reopening for December certainly is not going to be used. So uh, I'm wondering what adjustments uh, uh, are going to be made to the 2020 budget with these two items. Specifically, I'm not aware, I can't recall other budget deficit items. Thank you. Your Worship, if I may reply to Councillor yeah. Drinko on, on this one. The, the interim budget is by large a, a legislative hoop we have to jump through so we can keep payroll going into 2021 is, is what it is. Um, BC has completely different legislation and the previous year budget just carries on until the new one's approved and they don't have a need to approve an interim budget as we're discussing today. So this is a, an Alberta hoop that we have to jump through. And I think back to Councillor McGrath's uh, intent of the motion is just to allow administration to carry on into 2021. So I don't think adjustments to the 2020 budget are, are on the books. Um, the intent is just to carry us through to a formal operating budget approval in, in coming weeks, hopefully. Thank you for that. Any other debate on the motion before I call the question? I, I will observe that I too had hoped that we would be able to um, 
in fact pass a budget today, but I, given, given where we stand on the utility fees and how integral that is to the budget, I, I fully understand the, the uh, position that administration has been put in, um, given our, our dealings with uh, agenda item 7.3. So I accept that uh, in these circumstances, an interim operating budget um, is about the only way we have to move forward. But I, I am doubtful that it would be for a matter of weeks. I think that administration ought to be prepared for the for the potential that it will take some time into 2021 for council to land on a final budget, um, given the nature of the discussion today. But with that with that in mind, um, it's it's just a reality, and I am prepared to to vote in support of uh, the interim budget motion, councillor. Demota. Well, and I appreciate that. And, and thank you, Councillor McGrath, for taking the initiative. And, and I say, like, regardless of how it uh, transpired today, great job to everybody. Um, great job to administration. Great job to the rest of council for being as studious as we could be with the material we have in front of us. And I, I think that we've made a, a lot of steps forward and, and, and positive ones. And, um, you know, I don't want to keep blaming everything on the pandemic, but we are faced with some really crazy situations. And regardless of what we pass, I'm just hoping that if things transpire after we pass a, a budget um, that could change things in either direction, that we have the the desire to go back and, and revisit things. Just because we we make a, a decision on something doesn't mean it's written in stone. And, and we've seen that. And, uh, you know, Banff did it last year. We delayed our process. But I think that, you know, if in with the result of some potential new information coming forward or, or uh, some more assistance, I think that we might have an opportunity to to address things midstream. And, and like the mayor uh, offered last year, sometimes we could just wait a little longer and, and see. And, and I think this might be 2021 might be more of a year to do that than last year. So um, I'm willing to look at that as well. So congratulations, everyone. Councillor Butler. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I don't know why Councillor Demota doesn't want to blame everything on the pandemic. It is all to blame on the pandemic. Um, I want to make this point. Um, there has been in the community a combination of sticker shock at some of the um, budget inclusions and recommendations from administration, a combination of sticker shock and a sense of suddenness. And I do want to point this out that um, a, a, a large part of the reason for that was council's direction, two directions from council. One was tell us what you think you need. Administration, tell us what you need. And that's what they're meant to do. And that's what they've done. And in the end, the call as to what is considered to be a must have, nice to have, all of that stuff is one that rests with council. But then the second thing we said is we want to pass a budget by the 15th of December. And in other years, some of these conversations have extend, have deliberately been planned to extend into the new year and therefore haven't seemed so sudden. And so I just want to make the point again, mostly for any public that's listening that um, administration has done exactly what they were asked to do. And some of that sense of um, suddenness here is because council directed that we wanted to this year try to pass um, a budget before the end of the year. In retrospect, maybe this wasn't the year uh, that we would have chosen to say we're going to accelerate the process. And so we're adjusting, but um, I think a lot of credit is due to administration for trying to stick handle this while the puck has just, I don't know, got a mind of its own. So I wanted to make that point and thank you again to administration. Thank you, uh, Councillor Butler. Uh, I see you, Councillor Demota, but I also saw a hand up from uh, Ms. Nadon um, previously. So I, if, if that hand is still there, um, Ms. Nadon, I, I see it's now been removed, but your uh, mic is no longer muted. So go ahead. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I think it 
it was an old hand up, but please, uh, oh. <laughs> but please return to me. Um, after the interim conversation, there, there's another item I'd like to bring up procedurally, but by all means, please carry on with the uh, interim motion. Thank you very much. Um, I will return, um, although I might need reminding. Um, Councillor DeMota. I'll make it brief. I just I really appreciate what Councillor Butler just said. And, you know, we did ask to put everything on the table so that we can have a broader look at you know, the, the dire situation and, and what actually needs to get done. And uh, so it's no fault to administration for presenting all of that. And we asked for it. And I think it was good timing because uh, the rest of our community members are, are uh, stakeholders again, uh, get a better picture, uh, a clearer view of what's ahead for uh, for all of us to to tackle together and and i'm glad that we brought focus to it and um, there is sticker shock to it but it's there now and it'll be less alarming as we start to progress through it thank you thank you councillor demota if there is nothing else um on the motion before us i will call the question and that is um, to approve an interim operating budget uh, based on the 2020 operating budget to allow municipal operations to carry on into 2021. All in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. Thank you for that. Um, just um, to confirm then the ancillary questions uh, which don't need motion but is council then content to come back to specific discussions of items in the operating budget um, next week at our committee of the whole meeting? I see nods, um, then that shall be the case. And at that time we can give um, some further direction, including I would hope direction um, to administration as to when we might expect them to see the operating budget back on a regular council meeting sometime in 2021. Uh, that concludes, I, I think, for today, agenda item 8.1. We move to 8.2, which is only here as notice um, in any event with respect to the capital budget that was slated for decision on January 5th. I'm going to suggest, oh, I'm sorry. I did need a reminder. Um, Ms. Nadon had asked that after we dealt with the interim budget motion that I call upon her and um, I didn't do that. Um, so I will now and then I then I will return just to some brief remarks on the capital budget. Ms. Nadon, I, I apologize, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, the, the reason I wanted the floor again is that I think from a, in a procedural manner and to support administrative work moving forward, if you pull up the minutes from the last meeting, so from December 1st, there is a motion in there. So resolution number 318-20 is the formal direction administration had received from council on December 1st to draft a bylaw that included a utility fees bylaw that included $750,000 in additional revenue, as well as a flat rate for consumption. I would respectfully ask that council rescind that motion. And, um, and in and moving forward, what we've seen unfold just here is is the impact of that utilities bylaw on not only operating but capital budgets and in the absence of direction it, on that front I, I think that's the next step that's the next logical step for council to provide formal direction on, on what what would be required there and I think we have a sense of that and you might want to pick that up again at the committee of the whole meeting coming up so we can prepare for the first regular meeting in January but uh, yeah, I would ask for, for that motion to be rescinded and for council to consider that as the first step moving forward with the rest of the budget. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, very astute, um, I think. And, and yes, you are right. We do have a motion on the books um, directing you to do something that council has now indicated um, it has no appetite to, to continue with. Um, and so, um, a motion to rescind um, 
must be made. Um, sorry, Councilor Butler, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. I, I think I understand and I am more appreciative than I can say the spirit in which that suggestion has been made. I am aware that Council directed administration to prepare that um, bylaw, but administration did prepare that bylaw and um, administration fulfilled the intent of the motion. So I struggle with the idea of rescinding a motion that um, has resulted in specific actions. In fact, I'm not sure we can rescind a motion. There's, there's language and I've just been looking for it here. There is language around irrevocable actions and um, um, administration did that. We could, I suppose, entertain a motion for a first reading and defeat the motion um, if uh, administration feels that uh, there's a loose thread hanging here. But in a way, I don't like to rescind that motion because to do so would um, not even acknowledge that administration did put quite a bit of work into um, a motion made by council in good faith and um, actions that were taken on behalf of council's wishes in good faith. So I don't understand why we would, nor do I think that um, we would accomplish a good thing in doing so, in rescinding that. And again, I'm not sure we can because the motion was acted on. Thank you, uh, Councillor Butler. And I, I, I would need to avail myself of a moment to read uh, schedule two of our procedural bylaw, um, just to confirm what I, I think is, is your accurate um, description of um, irrevocable action and, and whether we can in fact act. Um, if there is need to recognize um, that that motion has been fulfilled, um, perhaps we can do that. So there is there is no question that um, anything is outstanding on, on behalf of administration. Um, and so rather than um, rescission, um, if administration is looking for some level of comfort and recognition that they have already completed that task, um, I don't have any recollection of a, of a prior occasion where we did this, but we might, um, by resolution, confirm that um, administration complied fully with that motion, and that's the end of it. But th that would be a bit of an unusual move, but it could be done if administration um, really feels that um, they have not exercised uh, the direction that was given to them. Mr. Greathead, you're unmuted, go ahead. Your Worship, I, uh, I think that um, Councillor Butler's opinion on this is is right and, and correct that we were tasked to bring back a model with a $750,000 of additional revenue. We brought that back um, and we've discussed it and I think we've met our obligation there. I think part of the question too is, our, so when we discuss and we're, we're planning the um, bylaws, and to bring this back for January 5th, there's still that two options that are we, get, um, we need clarification on. Are we going towards a CPI model or are we going towards a $750,000 of additional revenue? Um, I think this motion was more setting the uh, flat consumption rate as opposed to having the tiers generated within the Your Worship, you're muted. Sorry, you're on mute. Mr. Mayor, you're still muted. I apologize. Perhaps someone did that to me. Um, all right, I was going to uh, say uh, thank you, Mr. Greathead, um, and through you um, to 
Ms. Nadon, uh, your, your request um, for rescission, is that based on um, a lingering doubt about whether or not um, council is satisfied that the direction it gave um, on December 1st um, has been completed and we are satisfied? Or are, are you satisfied with uh, the comments um, made by Councillor Butler and uh, I think endorsed by Mr. Greathead? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I, I will not press the matter forward as in, I don't think that it's something that's unworkable if, if the motion is not rescinded. I think the point I'm trying to make is that we did receive direction by motion and, and as recognized by council was acted upon and was presented and, and thank you for that acknowledgement and, and recognition. I think the point I'm trying to make is that we still don't have direction on what that new bylaw should look like. And that should be, in my opinion, the first matter for council to consider as it has significant impacts on the two other items, which are the operating and the capital budget. And therefore, um, at the committee of the whole next week, I think it. We, we've made an effort to document council direction by motion in certain instances to be sure that we have clarity on how to move forward. It is not always possible. This question was raised at the very time that that motion was passed, if I remember correctly, by Councillor Butler, suggesting that is it necessary that we have a motion for this, just for clarity of direction to administration and, and consensus amongst councillors to be sure that everyone's on the same page was the reason we brought this forward. So please consider at the committee of the whole meeting, which direction you would like to provide Mr. Greathead to pass on to staff so we can be ready for January 5th with a utility rates bylaw, which will inform the operating and capital budget processes moving forward. Yes, understood um, and uh, appreciated and acknowledged. Um, we need to start um, with the utility fees bylaw in order for the other work on the on the operating budget and the capital budget to um, flow in the ordinary course. So understood, we need to get to that first and we need to provide clear direction. And I think we have all agreed that um, we will hopefully be there um, at Committee of the Whole next week. And although we can't give a, make a resolution in that venue, I think we can give clear direction. So that takes me back to um, agenda item 8.2, which is the capital budget, which is here only for notice in any event. And again, it is going to be subject to change based on what we do with the utility fee bylaw. So I, I would propose that we simply leave that. It is scheduled to come back on the, on the 5th. I would expect that at that time, um, we are unlikely to be in a position to deal with it effectively, but we can at that time defer it to again later in the year. Um, unless people have um, objection to, to that process, I, I think we could for today um, leave that as notice and carry on. Councillor Butler. Thank you very much. And I agree with that. Um, my reason for asking to speak at this point is that uh, I had raised um, a question for administration in between some discussions that were had with the Chamber of Commerce and this meeting around our um, uh, debt and debenture load. And I just would like, again, for the record, for public that may be listening, I would like it um, some clarity my question was, what would our total debt load be at the end of 2021 um, under the current budget proposal? And of course, we sort of abandoned the current budget proposal, but it's still a fair question. And I um, understood that we could have that answer here. And what would the annual payments look like if we were to pass the, currently, the current proposal? And I wonder if we could just have that information and then it could be included subsequently in the minutes for this meeting. Mr. Greathead, I, I think you had suggested we could have that answer here today. And it seems like an appropriate time to bring it up. Otherwise, I don't know when I would bring it up. Thank you, Councillor Butler. Uh, Mr. Greathead, go ahead. I'm just gonna have to ask uh, Ms. Malinchuk if she's able to um, 
obtain that information. Your Worship, through to Councillor Butler. Um, so in the process of trying to get the budget down to 750,000 um, and analyzing where we were with all the capital projects, we thought that we might be able to go into debenture mid-year. So we brought the um, principal and interest payments down to a hundred and just over 107,000 for um, wastewater treatment plant. Um, and the actual um, debt limits and all, all of that, I guess I missed that request in the meeting and would have to put some work into those projections. Um, so that was just the new one in 2021 for the wastewater treatment plant. I, I see your hand there, Councillor Butler. I just wasn't mm -hmm. entirely certain that Mrs. Mrs. Melanchuk was done, but I see she's unmuted, so I assume that she has completed. So go ahead, Councillor Butler. Right, thank you very much. Um, perhaps uh, I can request um, that the information I'm looking for, if it is at hand, and I believe the information I'm looking for should be at hand, that we can include it in the agenda for the next committee of the whole, because I think it would be helpful for us. Um, and I'm entirely satisfied to leave that for the moment. And it was not my intention to put anyone on the spot with that question. So um, I'm satisfied to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Butler. Um, Councillor DeModa. Thank you. I wasn't sure. I tried the process of, uh, of putting my hand up there. I wasn't sure if that worked or not. So I didn't want to inundate you with a bunch of it stuff. Did. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm glad that Councillor Butler brought that up and because I was going to ask it and the way I was going to ask it was, uh, you know, where we are, where are we with our debt load, um, you know, in reference to what our limit is, um, you know, and, and what's legislated for us. Uh, because there were some councillors that brought up, uh, you know, the, the option or the consideration for uh, borrowing for next year, to, um, if we can't get that most funding going in time and and or both. So it would be interesting to, to see where we're at. And, and I appreciate um, Councillor Butler for bringing that forward. So I guess it's the same direction that I would be asking for, if that's clear. Is that what Councillor Butler asked? If not, then I don't want to be asking extra. Uh, Mrs. Melanchuk, I see your hand up, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Sweet to Councillor Demota. Um, uh, 2019 financial statements will give you what we were at um, for 2019 and I will have to do the um, work to implement um, what occurred in 2020 so that you can see that but yes it's um, it's possible to look at the the situation uh, and where we are at um, if you are speaking to additional, debenture that is an increase in payments to principal and, in, and interest so that ultimately affects the what we would be requisitioning as well right uh through uh the mayor to to ms malinchuk uh thank you for for that clarification and you know i wouldn't if if it's going to cause more work for you right now and it's not going to really have an impact on any decision making in in the in the new year uh, right away and it, it's going to be part of the operational budget discussions and I'm, I'm willing to wait if it's going to go I don't you, you 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 have been working quite hard and and diligently over this last little while uh, the last thing I want to do before the holidays is throw more uh, work on on your plate so um, I'm okay with receiving that information a little bit later if, if it's not really pertinent to, to next week and um, because that does seem like quite a bit of work.
Thank you. Um, I am left in a, in a bit of uncertainty about what um, might be expected um, to be available for Committee of the Whole next week, particularly in terms of total debt load compared to legislated debt limit. And I, I think that that information, to the extent that we have incurred um, debt and borrowing, is available. Um, Councillor Butler asked, what would it be if we were to accept um, the proposal for the 2021 uh, budget? Um, and did you, Councillor Butler, um, intend to include both the operating and, and capital budgets? Because it, it seems to me that it will be a, a tremendous chore for Mrs. Melanchuk. Um, unless she just takes everything that was in that capital budget and, and adds it um, to know exactly where we might be on, on a projected um, debt load. So I, 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 for myself, I just, I, I want to have a, a bit of clarity from, from you, Councillor Butler, if, if you would, about um, what calculation um, are you looking for precisely? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, all I wanted to know is what is our current total debt load? I know that we are nowhere near our debt limit. I am not concerned about yes. that. I simply would like to know, and this is because it has been asked, um, and I think any resident or taxpayer might well want to know what our current debt load is and what we pay annually on that okay. um, approximately. I realize it can change over a period of time, and then secondly, at the end of um, at the bottom of the list of capital requests for 2021, there um, is a funding breakdown, how much would be funded by grants, how much by um, tax requisition and how much by debt. So if we added that debt, which I think is what Mrs. Melanchuk just referred to for the wastewater treatment plant debt, and then I think there was some more you know, what that would look like in a normal year. I, I don't even care what it would look like in the partial year where we would take that debt on. I think people would like to know how much debt do we have and about how much does it cost us to service that debt on an annual basis. Um, so in thinking that was a fairly straightforward request, that was the quest I made. Um, again, I'm not the least bit concerned about our debt limit. Our debt limit is, we're far from our debt limit. Um, and if it's difficult to provide that information, like I, I, we, we can wait. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Butler. I, uh, I at least uh, appreciate that, uh, that summation and I better understand uh, what you're asking for. All right, um, so those matters coming back to Council next week, um, Capital budget, I think we had indicated um, and that's where we were, that that will come back. And um, as soon as possible, um, that indication of our, of our debt load and servicing costs um, would be a relevant consideration to have and information that ought to be available to the public. I think then that we can go to agenda item 8.3 which is um, rent relief for tenants of municipal facilities and waiver of notice uh, since that comes um, on the heels of uh, the new provincial mandated closures and uh, hence the, the rush to confirm with our own tenants um, our position with respect to their requirement to pay rent. Um, I've lost my place in my agenda, but Mr. Greathead, is that your request? Um, yes, Your Worship, it, it, that's fine. Um, this was just brought to it, or we were looking at this um, this week as we were uh, approached by different that um, leave for spaces. Um, when we looked into it, we saw that it was a motion of council um, on April 21st 
to waive the rent for user groups of the municipal buildings. And we're just bringing this um, to council today for their consideration. Thank you, uh, Mr. Greathead. And that, uh, that waiver of rent initially was predicated on the fact, I believe, that the, the facilities had to close and we're back in that situation now. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Worship. Okay. Uh, and it comes with a request to waive notice. So I will deal with that first. Um, is council prepared to waive the notice that would otherwise be required and deal with um, this request at today's meeting? Councilor McGrath? I'd like to move that please, Mayor Ireland. All right, I will consider that to be a, a motion on the table. Any debate on that motion? Seeing no hands up, I will call the question. All in favor, and this is just with respect to the motion to waive notice. There are none opposed, that is carried. Um, thank you, and then with respect to the, um, the recommendation of the council, waive rent for tenants in all municipal facilities which are closed due to COVID-19 from the date of the facility closure until the facility reopens. Um, is there a councillor prepared to make that motion? Councillor Demota, thank you. Any debate on that, Councillor McGrath? I have a question on this, Mayor Ireland. I'm wondering if administration has the wording from the previous motion that we made back in April. Um, to know the specifics of that and, and to ensure that it's not still applicable during this closure, as I don't believe it was date specific. Your Worship, through to Councillor McGrath, uh, maybe I can take that one. I don't have the, oh, well, there's Kayla in action. <laughs> Clearly she has the answer. <laughs> can you zoom in, Kayla, please, a little bit? Maybe, there we go. Hmm. Yeah, so reading that wording, I'm curious if we could apply this motion once again and um, perhaps continuously throughout the pandemic when we are facing closures. Mayor Ireland, through yeah. to Councillor McGrath, we, we did have that conversation internally, uh, not quite as you framed it now, but as uh, does the current motion still apply? And we had determined that it did not because it was a second round of, of closures, as in facilities had closed, reopened, and now this was a, a different matter and we didn't want to just move forward with that direction without bringing it back to Council, I guess. But I, I appreciate the spirit of your suggestion where could we make this a, an ongoing item if additional closures are required. If council is comfortable with that, we can try to find some wording, but we do not have existing wording. Councillor Demota. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be challenging to do today, but if we could uh, down the road work on something, if, if that's gonna happen again. Um, I just wanted to say that if any most funding is applicable for anything, I can't see this not being an, an opportunity to um, to take advantage of some of those funds, regardless of the situation, because if it's going to be applicable for anything, it's got to be for matters like this. And and I hope that when we start ironing things out, that you know um, some assistance will be provided, uh, much like it is in the private sector. So uh, anyway, I, I appreciate this coming forward, and and thank you for bringing it to us. If I might um, suggest uh, possibly a, a friendly amendment, um, at least I believe it to be friendly to the to the motion, which I think was attributed to Councillor Demota, and that would be that council waive rent for tenants in all municipal facilities during all times at which the municipal facilities are closed due to COVID nineteen, and that would then be a, a rolling. Um, waiver of rent that we wouldn't have to come back and, and revisit and they would have no doubt that if they get out of the closure this time and then have to enter it again um, sometime in 2021 um, 
they would have the security of knowing that we're not going to charge rent um, in in the circumstances where our facility is closed. So if if you are comfortable with that um, as a friendly amendment, um, I can give that wording um, later to uh, to administration for the record. But you accept that, Councillor Demota, as a friendly. I appreciate amendment? your yeah. I appreciate you're on the fly wordsmithing. So thank you for being there. Thank you, uh, Councillor Butler. Had I seen your hand up? Oh, you did. I, I was going to make that exact suggestion. So great minds think alike. Thank you. All right. Um, we then have um, a motion um, on the table, uh, or before us at least. Um, any further discussion with respect to that motion? If not, I will call the question and again the motion is that council waive rent for tenants in all municipal facilities during all times at which the municipal facilities are closed due to COVID-19. All in favor? There are none opposed, that is carried. Agenda item 8.4 is paid parking. Um, Mr. Greathead, to you, through you, to whoever on staff might be presenting. Uh, Ms. Melchuk, do you want to speak to this? Yes, thank you. Um, so we had this on the agenda to discuss how or what uh, council would like to see happen with in-town paid parking um, as it was brought up in um, other meetings um, as discussions and presentations and then um, also during the budget discussion presentation um, and what the implications to the budget could be. Um, so the recommendation from administration would be that council implement implement paid parking in the 2021 budget year um, and that council allocate any surplus generated by the initiative in 2021 to road reserves and um, otherwise there are the options of deferring the addition of paid parking proposal to the 2022 year 2022 year and um, or that council allocate any surplus from the 2021 um, um, or sorry, th this also relates to if the recommendation was um, um, had that it could also be looked at whether or not um, anything could be um, allocated to property tax offset or reserves or a combination of both. Of both. Um, I'll just mention again that councils in the council's strategic priorities, it includes that seeking out and pursuing alternative sources of revenue to fund municipal services as one. Um, Municipalities can collect user fees to service to for services provided, which can offset the amount of property taxes collected annually. Uh, public parking in Jasper isn't free; it's paid for by the property owners at this moment and by extension to their tenants. Um, and all of that being said, uh, the only other addition from what council has seen in the past to this report. Um, was just in addition to um, the additional information, a bullet at the very bottom to include the amount or the uh, information that was provided at the public budget presentations on November 23rd of the potential revenue expense, uh, the staff expense that it also would be, um, would have to be reflected upon and the possibility of another $925,000 of revenue um, that could be uh, that could occur in the given year and that is it for the report at the moment thank you thank you uh mrs melinchuk that is here by way of notice with uh anticipation of further discussion january 5th and a decision on january 19th obviously a, a decision um, ought to be made before the finalization of the budget for 2021. Any uh, questions or comments with respect to the notice that is provided today? 
Councillor Butler and then Councillor McGrath. Thank you very much, Your Worship. I um, am looking forward to a conversation in the community about paid parking. I am no one to turn my nose up at the potential of $925,000 of net revenue in a year. If we are to implement paid parking, we are going, we are bound to hold substantial public in engagement or to allow for substantial public engagement on this question. Uh, to begin with, the three words implement paid parking could mean just a whole range of potential outcomes for the community. Um, where, for whom, what time of year, all of those things. I also have a real concern that if we are going to implement paid parking downtown generally in most of the CBD, then we are bound, we have to consider making changes to our parking bylaw throughout the community and look at some kind of resident parking passes. Because if we implement downtown paid parking and push people who don't want to pay for their parking, which is everyone, no one wants to pay for parking, push them to begin parking in the residential streets, then we're going to have a whole other kind of a problem. So I'm absolutely interested in having the conversation, but I have myself made commitments to community members who have queried me on this, that we would not go down this road without plenty of opportunity for public engagement. And I think we only need to look at some of the conversations we had within the past couple of hours to understand the sensitivity of um, and need for public engagement. So my point to wrap up is that if we, that I don't believe there's any way we can hope on January 19th to make a decision as to whether we implement paid parking. Uh, we have to have some conversations around what implementing paid parking would look like. So I'm open to having the conversation. I'm happy to see it in front of us, but we're gonna have to be a little more nuanced than that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Butler, Councillor McGrath. Thank you very much. And Councillor Butler, I'm in, in very much alignment with your statements. I, I look forward to engaging the public over a very thorough process in paid parking. Um, I am very optimistic that we can achieve alternate revenues for the community of Jasper by doing something such as paid parking, but I do want to make sure that it is in alignment with the way our residents and, and business owners feel as well. I, I think that the current situation is, is pointing so, so dramatically at the need and not only for paid parking to be considered, but also for the advocacy and ongoing efforts for, to drive us forward with resort municipality status and all of the efforts we talk about, um, hopefully we can find some some motivation to press forward and really, really strike um, the levels of government that we need to in the way to bring this much needed attention towards bringing some more revenue into the town of Jasper. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGrath. Um, all right, it is here by, uh, by way of notice, uh, discussions will continue. Um, it has been forecast that um, some councillors uh, in particular see a need for uh, a rather um, extensive public consultation, which is, is probably fair. I, I will say that I was extremely encouraged um, to see in the earlier presentation from uh, the Jasper Park Chamber of Commerce um, a reference to the possibility of instituting paid parking and also just general interest in um, our status uh, or our not yet status as a resort municipality. So I, there is real promise in this and I, I too look forward to the ongoing discussion. So thank you uh, for bringing that forward to us. Um, we are now at um, agenda item 8.5. 
five, um, where there had been a request to go in camera. Um, and I think that I saw during the course of the meeting, um, Mr. Greathead, you had indicated when we approved the agenda that you wish to add an agenda item 8.6 um, in the event that we wound up with um, an interim budget, um, which was the case, but there has been a suggestion that potentially some of the content of that discussion might also be appropriate for in camera. So if we are to move in camera, can we deal with both the uh, recommendations from the Human Resources Committee and uh, your uh, additional item, um, Mr. Greathead, which had not initially been um, slotted into an in-camera meeting, but might be more appropriate there? Yes, Your Worship. All right, and do we have a sense uh, from the Human Resources Committee how much time might be required for the in-camera discussion? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As the chairman of the Human Resources Committee, I would hope it'd be brief, but uh, that may not be the case because we have uh, some choices that we want council's input on. So that may, may, may require some, some discussion. Thank you. Okay. And Mr. Greathead, um, your discussion, I guess, is in the hands of, of council. I, I'm just trying to uh, coordinate um, the remainder of our day. And I'm, I'm going to suggest that if we move in camera now um, to deal with these matters, we confirm that we will come back to open session at perhaps 1.30. That, it is now 12.40 roughly. Um, that would give us um, as council some time to deal with the in-camera matters, some time to get some lunch, give the rest of our staff and the viewing public a break and an opportunity to have some sustenance and then we could fix a time um, to come back um, to this particular Zoom channel to continue the regular meeting. Does that find favor with, with council? It looks like we have nods. If, if we're not done, um, we can adjust at the, uh, the in-camera session, but I, I think we, we should give some clarity to people when they can anticipate coming back. So subject to any other comments, I, I would continue, but go ahead, Councillor Butler, I see that you're unmuted. Oh, thank you. I was just uh, I, I wondering when you were planning to come back because I was simply going to leap in and um, propose a motion to extend the meeting beyond four hours, which will happen oh. at 1230. But yes. I, I was waiting to hear when you thought we'd come back. Um, so I thought it just would be prudent to get that motion out of the way um, in advance. I appreciate that. Um, Sorry, so one thirty. We're, we're only at three hours right now, but we're no, we, uh, we, we, we are going to get over. Yeah, I meant to say we would meet that um, benchmark at one thirty, not twelve thirty. Yes. But it, it's, it's relevant now, and so uh, and it, we will go beyond that. So um, I will take that as a motion from Councillor Butler also that, move. that uh, this meeting extend beyond four hours. Any discussion? I'll call the question. All in favor? Thank you. There are none opposed. That is carried. Uh, Mr. Greathead, did you have something to add? No, Your Worship. All right, so I will um, say that on this particular um, meeting agenda, we will stand in recess until 1.30 for, for staff and public members who are not involved in the in-camera meeting. Um, we will reconvene at 1.30. Um, might I have a motion from somebody on the Human Resources Committee to uh, have us move in camera at uh, 12.43 p.m.? Councillor Demota, thank you. All in favor? There are none opposed, that is carried. So we will move in camera. Um, if, you, uh, if you can, councillors, log out of this session. And if I am able, I will send a link um, so we can reconvene um, right away in camera.
um, that will be another Zoom link. And I have been offered the tools and it's now a question of whether I can exercise them, um, but we, you will see something shortly from somebody. So thank you all. And then we'll come back to the public at 1.30. Thank you, everyone. I see the council has reassembled. Uh, Mr. Greathead is there and uh, our recording secretary, Ms. Byrne appears to be there under the Jasper logo. So I think we can recommence um, after that recess. We were at or are at agenda item 8.5, um, appointments to boards and committees and the Human Resources Committee, I believe has a recommendation. Uh, Councillor Journal. Yes, I do have a recommendation. I'd like to make a motion that the council approve the appointment of Dion Trombley to the Li Jasper Library Board. It's two separate motions, right? Yes, yep. Thank you. Yeah. Um, any discussion, debate? I'll call the question. All in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. Thank you, Councillor Journal. And the second motion is uh, that Council approve the appointment of Nathaniel Philippot and Selena Frisson to the Culture and Rec Board. I'm sorry, it's a what, term of two years. I don't have that in the motion, but I think it's self explanatory. Thank you. Thank you. Just taking a second here. I, yeah, we, I, I, I also do not have the, uh, the appointment period, but it's a two year term. And just for clarity, um, I take it there were a number of applicants for two positions. That is correct. Eight altogether. Uh, I, I would like to thank the uh, the Human Resources Committee for for going through those applications and vetting them. It's a it's a very difficult and challenging job. It's it's so rewarding that people in the community apply for these positions, and it's um, it's just unfortunate that there are not enough um, vacancies um, to to appoint all of the applicants. But certainly do appreciate that they have applied. Um, Councillor Butler. Oh, thank you. I was really only going to say that, that um, I hate to see these motions pass as if they're simply procedural. Procedural, I, I very much appreciate, and I know all of council does, um, those who um, take the step of putting their name forward for these positions. It's, um, it's an important contribution, and thank you to everyone and to the committee. Thank you, Councillor Butler. Councillor Journal? Again, I just wanted to thank all the, the uh, other six that have applied, uh, shown an interest in our community, trying to make things better. They've all had some very excellent uh, comments about how to improve our community. And for that, we really do appreciate their contribution and their uh, effort to step up uh, next time. Thank you. All right, thank you. And, and there will be um, in future other opportunities to apply for other committees. So we hope that those individuals who might be disappointed this round um, will continue their interest and apply for, for other committees. We certainly hope so. Um, all right, the motion is before us. Is there any further discussion? Right, I will call the question. All in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. Thank you for that. <clears throat> Agenda item 8.6 um, was added to today's agenda, and that is by the request of our CAO, our interim CAO, Mr. Greathead. So, Mr. Greathead, if you would speak to that, please. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'm first off seeking a waiver of notice, and then I'm asking for a um, request for decision to um, quickly hire a third um, bylaw officer uh, for the municipal um, department. 
we're just at capacity at this point, um, and we are suffering some of the impacts of COVID and some of the times that we're um, not able to be there. So we're, we're having a capacity issue. And that's why this request is in front of council today. Thank you, uh, Mr. Greathead. And I take it the, uh, the urgency and the request to, to waive notice is that um, had council accepted the 2021 um, proposed operating budget, this would have been resolved. Um, as that didn't happen, it becomes a bit of an urgency to staff up um, for the commencement of the new year. And that, that is the reason for the request for waiver. Is that correct? Yes, Your Worship, that's, a, that's exactly it. All right, thank you. Um, may I have a motion from a councillor with respect uh, to the limited question of waiving notice so that council may consider the request at today's meeting? Councillor McGrath, I saw you first, so thank you for that. I'll call the question, all in favor of waiving notice for today. Thank you, there are none opposed, so that is carried. And then with respect to the, the substantive matter, um, is there anything further that you wish to say about that, uh, Mr. Greathead? And I, I noticed that um, it is unclear to me exactly the, uh, the motion that you require. Your Worship, um, during the COVID uh, impacts, uh, the bylaw department was reduced by one uh, full-time staff, uh, or one full-time equivalent um, during the 2019, uh, or sorry, the 2020 year, uh, but we're finding that unsustainable at this point. So this is more to uh, restore uh, back to our previous uh, service levels. And so that would be the additional hiring of one more peace officer. And how will that be funded? Do you need um, something in the motion to deal with funding? Your Honor, I th think we can, I think this, we wouldn't have, it would be the interim, so uh, we probably wouldn't be able to um, actually have somebody on the ground until the beginning of the year. There may be an upset of, I would say, sixteen thousand uh, dollars to cut, and that would be just to cover a period until the um, proper operating budget is uh, approved, and that would buy us a few months. All right. Well, I. <clears throat> I, I leave it to some extent in, in your hands, but I, I recognize that we have an interim operating budget based on 2020 and if 2020 was reduced uh, because of COVID um, and doesn't fund the position, um, we could well approve a position and no funding to go along with it, which I think might leave you in a bind. So to the extent that we can work together, um, that might be helpful. Um, Councillor Butler, I think I saw your hand up. Thank you, Your Worship. I was going to suggest that we not deal with the question of funding at this point. Uh, it would put this request into much the same uh, position that Council was in when we agreed to add the position of a communications assistant, where even within the um, request for decision, it was acknowledged that we would um, determine in, down the road whether funding would come from internal reallocations or from new money. So, it seems to me that we can deal with the specific issue of going ahead with hiring because I do appreciate administration coming and asking um, due to the sensitivity of, of new hires under these economic, under these difficult economic times. My suggestion is that we just proceed with, uh, with um, the question of the new position itself. 
All right, thank you. And um, not so much a new position, but restaffing an existing position. I think is, fair is point. what the request is. Um, so fair enough. Uh, Councillor DeMota. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Mr. Greathead. Um, I appreciate you bringing this forward and, and uh, giving us the ability to, to have this discussion. Um, I'm just, again, curious about most funding. Has anybody else in Alberta applied for it? Do we know if anybody's been successful? Because until we start applying for things and knowing whether they qualify or not, like this is another example of we had to we had to cut services or a position because of COVID. We made because we made the tax cut. So, you know, we keep we keep hearing that we don't know what we can do with it yet. Well, are they asking us to put in bulk orders in for when we need to submit, or can we just keep doing one-offs until you know, we find out what gets approved and what doesn't get approved. Your Worship, just to speak to uh, Councillor DeMota's question, the most grant is to um, offset the losses. So the money is, uh, if, if I can get it, I got a snippet off the, uh, the page here. It says the government of Canada and the government of Alberta provided money. Oh, now you froze. Transfer. Uh, pardon? For to support municipalities, which have experienced significant operating impacts due to COVID 19 pandemic. Now, we were selected as the three uh, to roll out. So there's um, us, Banff, and Canmore that uh, were awarded this money. And this money is to be used to for incre incremental operating costs incurred during, uh, due to COVID 19 response and restart as well as other operating losses or deficits incurred as a result of COVID-19 impacts on revenue and operations. It's not as to be used as our general operating um, or our... Is it just me or did we lose? Yeah, no, I, I am having difficulty with, uh, the, with Mr. Greathead's link. Um, the Is, are, am I coming through now? Yes, much more clearly. Much clearer? Okay. Um, the, again, this money is only uh, to be used for the incremental operating costs incurred during, during the COVID-19 response and restart, um, as well as other operating losses or deficits. So it's not intended to be um, part of our uh, operating budget or, or anything to do with our capital um, items. It's only um, as our COVID response. So basically we're getting $3 million potentially, but not really having the ability to apply it. Because what, from what you have just said, how are, we, how are we going through the process of applying that? Because I've heard several scenarios today where that might apply, but it doesn't. No, and I, 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 it, cannot, it, it cannot be used to um, our general operating expense. Uh, it cannot be used for that. It can also not be used for our capital projects. It's only to cover the impacts of our operating expenses on the COVID. So um, that, that includes our losses, um, our reduction in user fees, our reduction in water um, and sewer revenue over the year, uh, the, the hard cross of, of increased staffing and stuff like that. So that's what this most grant is um, to be applied for. And I'm not sure exactly where we are. I can we could probably um, be able to break out a, a you know a report on that within the next week or so, um, depending on Ms. Melanchuk's availability. But I, you know, it's 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 not just um, there for any any purpose. You know, it's quite specific in in what we can use it for. Yeah, but so okay, so sorry if I may continue, sir. Well, if well, Councillor Demota, just uh, just with respect, I, I'm not sure. Well, firstly, we don't have a motion before, so I can't tell whether it's relevant okay. to the motion. Um, but I would like to get on with the motion, and I, I the, the motion I think will be independent of this question. And I uh, I agree that we have to sort out the most issue eventually, but it is not the guiding issue pertaining to this particular well, request to restaff a position. So um, my question I, was though. Yes, go ahead, ask your question. Well, 
Well, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> so uh, just going forward, if this is a restart and we need to get to where we were, could, we, could that be considered part of a restart out of COVID and find some funding if council desires to go down in the, down the road of funding this position? That's, I think that's ex where I was getting precisely. I apologize for making it longer. Uh, sorry, Councillor Demota, and I believe that would I believe that would qualify, but I would need clarification from our grant advisors on that. Thank you, Councillor Butner. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'm prepared to make a motion. I think we need to have a motion to continue. My view is that uh, the issue of hiring proceeds, and frankly, is more critical than than the issue of where the funding comes from. So, if it's the will of Council, I have a motion. Yes, I would welcome that. Thank you. Uh, be it resolved, the council authorized the hiring of a bylaw enforcement officer to meet community needs resulting from the COVID-19 crisis. Period. Thank you for that. Um, Mr. Greathead, um, through to you first. Uh, is that motion sufficient for your needs? Yes, Your Worship, and uh, we will be able to uh, start the process right away. All right. Thank you. Um, I will trust that uh, Ms. Byrne was able to get that motion recorded because I was not, um, but there will be a, a, a recording of exactly what it was. So I, I will simply call the question unless I see either, any other hands up. Uh, Councillor McGrath? If I may, please ask a question to administration. Mr. Greathead, what community needs due to the COVID-19 crisis do we currently require in the bylaw department? Your worship through to uh, Council McGrath. Um, quite often we're being impacted uh, significantly by COVID, uh, partially because of the staff housing and when one of the uh, crew um, is uh, becomes a, uh, declared a co close contact, then we have to take the, the um, isolation protocols into play. So we're not able to meet our you know, operational capacity uh, anywhere where we normally expect to. And we're finding that there's, there is a deficiency. If I may follow up on that, please, Mayor Ireland. You may, yes. I'd just like to take an opportunity to thank you as the, the leader of the organization, as the interim CAO, as being very responsible in that and encouraging proper isolation and proper protocols be followed with our workforce for the municipality of Jasper. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Councillor McGrath, Councillor Butler. Thank you very much. I just wanted to take a brief opportunity to speak to my motion and to uh, say that I uh, appreciate and, and for for public paying attention, I think it's important to understand that what we're doing here is replacing a position that was removed um, as a result of uh, budget restrictions. And I appreciate very much the department's um, ex acceptance of that and the effectiveness with which they dealt with that staff shortage. But I think the reality is that um, the department really cannot function for an extended period of time with uh, only two members um, and we have reached that period of time. So uh, I, I just wanted to extend my thanks to the department for their extra efforts over this difficult year and those um, extra efforts I know will continue. And then I wanted to say one more thing with respect to hiring. Uh, when I have been looking at uh, budget, I have generally been of a mind that in these very difficult economic times and the fiscal restraint we have to um, work within that I'm kind of of a no new hires mind. My mindset generally is this is not the time to be adding to our team, but I do find this to be an exception. Community safety is really important. And again, we're only drawing that department back up to frankly, the kind of um, staffing levels it needs in normal times, never mind during COVID. So I also, will point out that I mindfully added the um, uh, phrase uh, re needs resulting from COVID-19 crisis 
because it might help to position us uh, for using some most funding. So that's why I just tossed that in there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Butler, Councillor Demota. And that's exactly where I was going. And I, you know, I, I was a little skeptical because I have a hard time um, hiring or rehiring at the time where most places in our community are laying people off. And that's, it, it's, it's difficult to make those uh, decisions, especially from what we heard from, from some of our uh, external uh, partners today. And so I'm, I'm not doing this under duress, but with the understanding that I believe that we are gonna get some of this covered so that it doesn't really come as a, uh, a tax burden to the to the local taxpayers. So I'm in favor of doing this uh, because we need it. I, I work in, a, in an area where um, we've been short staffed because of uh, the same uh, scenarios that uh, Mr. Great had referred to. So I understand the implications of that. I understand what it's like to be short staffed at this time. And I also understand the extra stress that COVID puts on the community and people working. So that's how I am in favor. Thank you, Councillor Demota. Councillor McGrath. Sorry to have one more question. I'm curious, Mr. Greathead, um, with regards to Councillor Demota's statement and likely that the municipality is making workforce reductions in some areas that facilities are closed. How does this impact the union, say, bringing a new position in as we are probably going through reductions in other areas? I'm assuming that the nature of bylaw services work is so specific that it couldn't necessarily be filled by other workers within the organization. Your Worship, Councillor McGrath, you're, you're correct. It's uh, There's a level of competency and training that's required for this position. So it, it's not a position that's available available for uh, just general backfilling. When we do post the job, if we do happen to have some, uh, you know, an internal candidate that is sitting on a, a peace officer designation, which I doubt, um, obviously they, they're, they you know, what they would be first of the line. Thank you, uh, Mr. Greathead, and thank you, Councillor McGrath, for the question. I, I just want to reiterate a comment I made earlier that, uh, and for, for the public primarily, that this is not creating a new position. This is simply staffing an existing position, which um, was, was left vacant uh, because of COVID, um, and it has proven that it is even more difficult to um, attempt to work with a skeleton staff, but the position was always there. It simply wasn't filled um, for the last many months. Um, and so it is different than adding a position. It is simply um, restaffing to the, uh, the recognized strength of that department. If there is uh, nothing else, I see no other hands. I will call the question. All in favor? There are none opposed, that is carried. So thank you, Mr. Greathead for bringing that forward and you may proceed to restaff to former levels. Agenda item nine, um, correspondence for information consideration or action. Um, but there is nothing on um, our agenda, I'm aware that um, Councillors received um, lots of uh, information and correspondence in the last day or so, some of it, um, which may ultimately make its way um, to the record, some of which would not, but I am not aware of anything outstanding um, that needs to be considered or brought forward at this time. Am I missing anything? If not, then I can turn to other new business. Is there any new business or council consideration today? Councillor Demota. Well, I just wanted to thank you um, very much for your public message uh, last week or this week. Uh, lots of positive feedback from members of the community as well as visitors. And 
uh, I've seen uh, better compliance or at least people embracing what they need to do to be safe in the community more so than I have. And, and maybe it's just specific to where I work, but even walking in the community and stuff, you still get your, your rule breakers and, and things like that. But I, I'm not there to address uh, people or, or make or shame them or anything like that. Uh, for all we know that there are people out there that, that uh, may not uh, have the ability to, to put a mask on. So uh, I think more so people are um, understanding what they need to do when they're visiting here. And although the, the, the level of visitation isn't here, I, I think what you said specifically is being addressed in the right way. And uh, I just wanted to extend that appreciation. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Devoney. All right, if uh, there is no other new business, uh, Councillor reports, Councillor Butler. Thank you very much. Sorry, I was a little late on the draw. I was absorbing what um, Councillor Demota had said, and I, I was going to essentially make the same point and thank you for your public service message last week, which was focused on be safe and which did not um, go in other directions that it might have gone, gone. And I wanted to make this point because I know there has been some uh, well, discussion around there, I know, around that message. Um, some of that discussion came before the message, which was released, and I found that pretty interesting. And there were rumors flying around the town that the mayor um, was going to try to close the town down. And I know that there was some considerable dissatisfaction expressed by some, um, even with the content of that message. And the point I want to make right here is that while that message was delivered by the mayor on behalf of the community, the message came out of conversations with discussion, or sort of conversations and discussion with all of council. Um, and I think it's very important that the community realize that um, this messaging is critical, important. It is very hard to thread that needle and to walk the tightrope to determine what is the best messaging. I know that there is some sentiment in the community that we should be issuing stronger messages and there is absolutely sentiment that we should be staying out of it altogether. But I wish it to be clear that uh, Mayor Ireland doesn't um, craft community messages independently and on his own. We have fulsome council conversations around that. And I would venture that um, if each councillor were asked to deliver a message as they saw fit, we would get seven different messages and they would run quite a gamut from um, very soft and squishy to very harsh. Um, I hope the community is um, just fully cognizant of the amount of thought, consideration, discussion that goes into and has gone into the messaging that has gone around out publicly around COVID uh, over these many difficult months. So I echo my thanks to you, Mayor Ireland, for the manner in which you approach these difficult issues of public messaging around COVID. Well, th thank you again, and um, an opportune time to also thank um, our, our own municipal staff for their contribution to getting those messages out. Um, it, it is something beyond my capability. Um, I can stand in front of the camera, but uh, I don't operate it and I don't do all the other work. Um, and, and I do appreciate the assistance um, that I get from our staff for that. So thanks to all. Any uh, other, I'm sorry, Councillor McGrath. I just wanted to note that I have a Jasper Community Team Society meeting on December 17th. And just a question of clarification, because I do have in my calendar in front of me, the 29th as a meeting, but I'm based on our conversations today, the next regular meeting is January 5th. So we are not in meeting on the 29th, is that correct? I hope that that is correct. Um, okay. I, I see now that you mentioned it, it is in my um, electronic calendar as well, but. Um, it's the fifth Tuesday, it was just mentioned by administration. So that makes sense. Yes, yes, it does. Perfect. All right, thank you for that. Um, Councillor Demota. 
I have a culture and rec meeting uh, this week. So looking forward to, to that and reporting back to council and uh, announcing our, well, I don't think I'll have to go through the process with HR. I guess th the people have been announced. So I'll be excited to, to speak to those. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I can advise that um, there is an economic recovery task force meeting uh, scheduled for tomorrow. Um, I have some court responsibilities. I'm not sure whether I will be concluded. I, I'm anticipating I will be, but Councillor Demota, I think you are the alternate on that committee. I may need to call on you, but that depends upon whether or not you would be available at three o'clock tomorrow. Yes, sir. I'll make myself available for you if, you need, if needed. Thank you for that. Any uh, upcoming events of note? I, I expect uh, probably not, given that we are not entitled to have any gatherings. Um, so that takes us to agenda item 13. Um, auspiciously numbered today. And might I have a motion to adjourn? Councillor Trudeau, you were the, the first to have your hand up. I will give you um, that recognition, a uh, motion from Councillor Trudeau that we adjourn at 2.03 p.m. All in favor? I see no hands left to be opposed. So I will say that we are adjourned I thank you all. I thank all of the uh, staff members for your contribution and time today. And my thanks to those members of the public who shared all or part of this meeting with us. Thank you all. And uh, we shall reconvene again as Committee of the Whole one week from now. Thank you, uh, uh, Councillor keller -Hampi. I do hope that you were able to enjoy the rest of your birthday. Yes, happy thank birthday, you. Helen.